okay so a very good morning to all of you uh today uh in the webinar uh, uh one day webinar uh, the topic of the webinar is early warning system for lightning and mitigation measures i shreyas divedi welcome you all i'm junior consultant uh in the resilient infrastructure division national institute of disaster management Chair, i sorry. welcome you all i i welcome you all uh first of all i would i would like to thank our uh, executive director sitaj hasan sir for allowing us to do this webinar and uh, now i would like to welcome our esteemed guest uh sanjay shivastav sir ji he is a well renowned name in the field of the lightning and uh, he is also he is also the light uh, convener of the lightning resilient india campaign uh, it is a joint initiative of imd cropc and wbi and mr kostav saha sir he is a ceo and founder of seven digital private limited and uh, our head professor chandan bhos sir he is head in resilient infrastructure division in national institute of disaster mm -hmm. management and he is going to chair the today's webinar and uh, our conven convener for today's webinar is dr garima agrawal she is senior consultant in resilient infrastructure division and idm so i welcome you all for today's uh, 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 webinar and uh, i welcome all participants also so first of all i would like to uh, call dr garima ma'am to set a context for today's webinar then we will proceed further thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much uh, shreyas good morning everyone and welcome to the webinar hosted by nitm on early warning system for lightning and mitigation measures my warm welcome to colonel sanjeev shivastav from cropc and um, mr koswa saha ceo and founder uh, seventh digital private limited professor ghosh head of resilient infrastructure division and uh, shreyas devi our moderator for today Uh, my warm welcome to the participants who have joined the program despite of their busy schedules. Uh, lightning has become a serious threat in the recent years, and this is due to primarily increased exposure to the people, especially farmers, fishermen, and laborers who remain outside for the reason of their livelihood. Climate change is one of the reason of increasing the intense rainfall and lightning. Our technological advancement has increased the number of electrical objects, instruments, and devices, which has increased the strike rates. In the recent year, there has been a significant increase in the frequency, intensity, and geographical spread of the lightning risk in India. That is uh, definitely due to the erratic rainfall happening due to monsoon reasons. Uh, as per the National Cl uh, Crime Bureau uh, Record Bureau, indicates that about 17 states have notified lightning strikes as as disasters, and uh, the lightning strikes have caused about one lakh deaths over the last 50 years. That is from 1967 to 2019. Uh, the recent report of 2020 NCRPP uh, talks about that total accident uh, death due to natural factor has been like 7,405 out of which 38 percent of the deaths are caused due to lightning. Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and Uttar Pradesh are the biggest victim states under this uh, uh, lightning impact, and that trend indicates that number of deaths due to natural forces are increasing over the years. And Chhattisgarh, even Chhattisgarh. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, the data says that lightning has been the dominant factor uh, for deaths due to uh, due to the, these events. Uh, since monsoon is reaching India, it is the right time to discuss about the lightning issue and its mitigation measures. Our concept note is very comprehensive, and it has been developed through by using various important sources, which has been shared with all of us, all all of the participants as well. I think. So that is a very uh, good resource which we have developed and should be referred for this particular topic. And there has been a significant improvement if we talk about the mitigation measures and the uh, and the way the government of India is working on this issue. So there has been significant improvement in our capabilities to monitor, predict, and warn the people. India is amongst the few countries who has developed the lightning warning system, which is a joint initiative of IITM, IMD, and NC. Uh, MRWF. This was developed in 2018. This system has a location-specific forecast, which gives up to 48 hours uh, of forecast uh, of occurrence of any thunderstorm, lightning, or wind, or gusty wind, or hail storming, and all. Apart from that, about 30 radars in uh, in the country, which have which provides the weather information in every 10 minutes. ISRO is providing satellite information on Insight 3DR. 
about uh, uh, about the uh, clouds which are uh, which is actually uh, getting uh, uploaded in every 15 minutes and the real time information is updated in every 5 minutes so uh, uh, so in each and every district of the country we have the updated information through imd and imd has also developed a damini app for uh, lightning alert which provides location specific information which remain valid for about half hour or so something and they have about 1000 information state stations which is spread across the country so there is a need to popularize the damini app as well because it gives you a warning system for uh, for uh, ensuring that you can take some measures to mitigate the impact of uh, lightning. And DMA has also prepared certain guidelines for the state governments to prepare lightning action plan and disseminate uh, uh, and, uh, and there are do's and don'ts also given in the in the plan uh, in the guidelines which can be uh, which can be referred to. Uh, what we need is there is a need to have an integrated system for dissemination of lightning and other local disaster alerts by the states and uh, along with the district authorities. And there's a need to have a systematic approach in managing the risks associated with these disasters, which can prevent or mitigate their impacts. So with this background, the data which I have used is from the IMD sources. So with this background, I would request our panelists to share their views on how lightning and the thunderstorm can be mitigated in our country. What are the basic steps which can be taken at the individual level and what should be done by the local government, state level, as well as central level. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for setting the today's con context of the webinar. Uh, now I'd, uh, I would request Professor Chandan Bo, sir, uh, before we start our technical session, sir, give a brief idea about what we are expecting today's session uh, on today's webinar, what we are expecting to uh, know or in the in the knowledge field so please sir could you brief us about what we are expecting today uh, yeah already uh, some accounts of uh, lightning given uh, in the introductory remark by dr garib agarwal and while uh, expectation of uh, this seminar especially for the community where we have called uh, colonel sanjay Sivastava who is very much well known, who has dedicated his life after active service in the Navy. Navy, no? Uh, army, sir. Colonel army. from Army. Sorry, 30 years of his Army life, he has taken that spirit uh, into the community services, uh, special across the country and working along with the government and organization like IMD, IITM and institutions. Uh, many institutions and also state government and he has worked in Jharkhand for more than nine years I think uh, uh, in, in disaster management and implementing many of the things. So uh, main thing is uh, we have uh, uh, experts in the country and we have scientists also in the country. Uh, at the same time we have been seeing that many such installations are being done by uh, agencies uh, in India and also agencies from outside, especially from USA, uh, which Colonel Sivastav uh, knows very well that what are their way and motive in taking this. And also we have got our service, uh, we have got our agencies like uh, IMD uh, who cannot develop the instrument because their role is the early warning or this dissemination and also Air Force and even many other organizations who have got uh, these instruments devised elsewhere, especially in USA, and they have got the instrument, but thing is, uh, it is for their specific purpose, but for community, which uh, Colonel Sivastav is going to highlight, the more than uh, four to 5,000 people are dying, and it is recording or exceeding all the records uh, of previous one, so he is going to give a vivid uh, descriptions about about the lightning related deaths and the kind of campaign as he has mentioned in his just in our informal discussion uh, that how India government has given uh, the priority especially UP and Bihar and there are lots of uh, discussion is going on even on 18th and 19th of uh, last month when relief commissioners conference were held in Bhagan Bhavan 
where uh, disaster management department and all NDMA members were there. So they are also this lighting related, uh, uh, say death that causing a lot of, lot of damage. So which has become concerned, but not yet included into our disaster management uh, say chart, uh, like many others have been included in the Disaster Management Act. So there is a there is a, so the state governments and district level, wherever such events are happening, so uh, relief commissioners and all are they are they are, they are in a they are not in a position to take some kind of steps or directions, which probably will come up very soon. So the main. Pro, uh, aspect of this uh, seminar is especially early warning part and protection systems. So protection system for the houses or in the villages, which I'm going to take care a little bit, uh, whatever available in the codal provisions, both in India and outside. And uh, Colonel Sanjay Sivasta will take care of the arrestor or instruments that being uh, made available uh, especially early warning or lightning arrestor. So that part uh, he is going to speak uh, uh, in the beginning. And then we have got a great scientist, especially about uh, uh, about this phenomena where in day to day life uh, that uh, Gustav uh, Shaha uh, ji is going to intervene in between while taking our discussion or pellant discussion and giving that what are the day-to-day -day life that we are dealing with, the basic science uh, behind this uh, this very aspect of light link, how it happens and how in day-to-day -day life uh, we can experience and we can experiment and we can, uh, uh, we can familiarize ourselves uh, with, the, with the lightning related phenomena which uh, we can observe in our day-to-day -day life using some of the devices that while in our discussion, uh, just telephonic discussion, that uh, he is having two, three devices over here. Uh, so uh, he is going to take uh, uh, on the scientific instruments. In fact, given some more time, he would have operated uh, those things here to show a live show. But our next program will be to bring together uh, Colonel Sanjay Sivastav along with the instrument and uh, testing it and also. Uh, uh, Kostav uh, Saha, uh, that who uh, is having few of this system, uh, where he's, uh, he's, he'll be given some time, maybe 10, 15 days of time, that he will operate those things for general awareness to the public. So uh, with this, uh, I would say that uh, let us see that our participants are joining. And at the same time, this is being on record. So this will be there. In fact, day before yesterday, there was a program from the same NIDM where Colonel Sivastav was there. It is a very, very enlightening, enlightening lecture in about the lightning, enlightening lecture about the lightning that you gave, uh, which uh, even uh, even person from IMD also were there and also UP uh, Uttar Pradesh uh, uh, Disaster Management uh, Authority Vice Chairman uh, also were there. So it was an extensive program that they have covered uh, so I hope that uh, even though it is uh, it is a wide area, vast area, but we will motivate more on the early warning, uh, which will be taken care of by Kandil Sivastav. And I will take care of the, some of the protection systems that which are available in the Indian code and, uh, and the code specially devised by NFPA, uh, National Fire uh, and uh, this uh, agency. Uh, protection agency of America who have got their new revised code in 2019. 2019 they got it and in fact they started making such kind of guidelines. I will give the history of making guidelines to our audience uh, uh, that uh, how guideline making started and requirements, uh, what are the minimum provi provisions, how they are to be installed. Uh, those are meticulously given in Indian standard code as well as uh, even in uh, in many of the standard codes that uh, they define that how to take care of. So, uh, in fact, guideline making becomes such a big exercise. So, I would like to give some glimpse of that, that how experts are involved in making such kind of code and their provisions. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, 
thank you very much sir thank you very much sir for giving a brief agenda of today's webinar i think uh, uh, i should start our sessions formally now uh, so first of all i would like to welcome our first speaker colonel sanjay srivastava sir he is uh, uh, we may very well uh, just uh... We may also say few few words, introductory remarks from. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, huh? Yeah. 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 We sir, keep on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Costa, sir, can you please share some remarks? Yeah. Good morning to all and all panelists and all participants today. Uh, yes, uh, it's a very wide topic as uh, as uh, Chandan uh, mentioned about it. Uh, but yes. Uh, now it is lightning uh, uh, has caused a lot of destruction and uh, due to the air ionization and also due to the particulate matter increasing day by day we are having uh, the lightning strike very much and it's very disastrous air to air lightning air to ground lightning so uh, uh, from ages i mean from a lot of uh, days and a lot of years now we have the uh, prediction setups uh, quite well. They are doing three hours to three days setups. Uh, we are getting all those predictions already in our network. And companies uh, like Earth Networks, as mentioned uh, earlier, uh, they are giving a lot of data and a lot of uh, correct data and precise data. Uh, but the concern is like how it is reaching to the last mile. See, today lightning is not going to strike on my head or on your head because we are in a protected environment out here. Uh, being uh, concerned about Indian farmers, people who are going out in the farm or going outdoor to work, uh, that is the major concern uh, where we need to protect and come into picture. So mm -hmm. as the event progresses today, I'll come up with a few devices which we have and few methods which we uh, like to implement also uh, in in remote villages and uh, you know some alarms and all based on this uh, advanced notification which we get uh, channelized and customized to that particular zone so uh, we will take it in that way and i'll definitely show you two three devices and uh, also <coughs> we will we'll try to show you uh, as because Chandan uh, Ghosh had uh, requested for a live uh, a demo also a very short time but could not arrange much but we have got uh, uh, Mr. Saikat Das in the uh, in our participant list and, mm -hmm. uh, during the event uh, today I will try to call him in the panel and try to show a device which we are already working uh, in, in, a, in a village in West Bengal and it is giving live data from that. Uh, we'll take it up in that way. So that is that's how the whole flow will be from my side, and I put it back to you. Can uh, I take it up uh, and pass it on uh, for the next uh, person? Right, Ji. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, early warning system, capacity building, lightning forecast, and safe zones, climate change, risk assessment, teaching, advisory, and policy intervention. These all topics we can say, or there are a lot of topics now, uh, in which Colonel Sanjay Srivastava is his mastery. Uh, these all are his expertise area. He is member, uh, he is convener of Lightning Resilient India campaign and also the chairman of Climate Resilient Observing System Promotion Council, CROPC. So he is a well known name. I don't want to uh, say, uh, I'm not able to say uh, a lot about him. Bhosar also uh, tell him about, about how uh, he's uh, devoted his 30 years of career in this field. So welcome you, sir. And uh, uh, today's topic for sir is uh, overview of lightning and its impact. Some recent cases, cases please. So uh, welcome, sir. And uh, I think you have some presentation, so I am. Uh, you can also share that, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good. good. Good morning, Professor Chandra Ghosh, Dr. Garima, Parshi and Shreyas, and Kostu Saha. First, I would like to extend my gratitude and thanks to National Institute of Disaster Management 
for providing this platform about the topic which is at the core of my heart and which is disturbing the country. Uh, just a small thing, sir. Uh, mine has been 22 years in army and uh, uh, last 15 years in disaster management. So that has been the journey so far. And since I come from a different part of Indian Army, and it is a privilege that I had the fortune of going through all the various advanced courses in India and abroad, and learn the technology of lightning. And the whole thing started in 2008 when I took premature retirement from Army due to my domestic constraints. I had lost my father and brother. And I am also indeed grateful to the former Chief Minister of Jharkhand, Shri Arjun Mundaji, who is now the Tribal Welfare Union Minister. He appointed me as his advisor, and there we started this journey on lightning. Suddenly, we saw 30, 20 people dying in one day. And being an air defense officer, first thing came to my mind was the early morning. I inquired and I requested him for a fund grant, which he immediately granted me. And we bought seven sensors and we deployed in Jharkhand. That was in 2008. Then we developed the early warning. And when it came, when we developed it, then Earth Networks also came to India and they offered one sensor free of cost that you try ours also. And then in 2015, we developed the lightning early warning, validated it, presented it to the government of India. And then IITM took up a project, not IITM, Ministry of Earth Science took up a project and gave it to IITM, which deployed 20 sensors in Maharashtra. Then followed by Andhra Pradesh, he was the next one. Followed by West Paul, that time, Additional Chief Secretary Suresh Kumar, he was there, he took it. And then it went to Odis, Natka, and the rest of the country. And after 2018, we did not sell the concept. And the concept has been adopted by the Ministry of Earth Science. And entire country was deployed with the lightning early warning system. Moving forward, as far as the forecast today is concerned, you can see here, this is the five days forecast. And here, it is 8 June. This entire half the India is expecting lightning by today's second half. But most important thing is the world is lightning is the monsoon. As the monsoon comes, entire country is gripped by the lightning. It's the pre-monsoon period. And this timeline which I am showing here that is most important in seeing the lightning expectation. So wherever this timeline is moving, you expect in the same region, lightning during the month. As far as the lightning status is concerned, as of now, these are the lightning thunderstorm clouds which are over India. And by the evening, it will rise more. I would also like to quote a very important thing which my friend Ms. Mami Mizutori said at Bali during the GPDRR7. Has ours turned into disasters because our human decisions don't take us to reduce vulnerability exposure? Disasters are, in a way or another, all human made. Khatra aapko me badha jata hai, kyunki humare nirnay hume bheta jodhi ko kam khandi ke liye nahi lete hai. The whole meaning is that our decisions are not to cover exposed people's vulnerability. Not identify who is exposed. We take decisions. But giving decision, a WhatsApp-based messages, environment, it does not matter. Who is involved? Who is exposed? The exposed person is the farmer in the field, the fisherman doing fishing, the cattle grazer, the jungle hunter, the open area laborers who are working in the open. So our decisions we fail in our decision focusing on the exposed people's vulnerability. Or isiliye aapadaye kisi na kisi roop mein hoti hai, sabhi maano nirmit hoti hai. Kahi na kahi humare human decisions ka natida hota hai. I would like to say lightning is an avoidable disaster. 
how i'll show you coming on to cropsy this is a not for profit organization basically aim to bring technology driven innovative solutions in the domain of disaster management and we work in the domains of environment climate action preventive and proactive disaster management and we have four divisions the division on observation systems and lightning is headed by me and modeling and forecasting is by dr kj ramesh and the water division is by professor ek gosai we have 12 scientists and two senior is officers as part of the governing council we launched lightning resilient india campaign this is our third year and our aim is to reduce the lightning deaths in the country by 80% yes we had a mix of success but before that our approach was two pronged one was to stop death immediately by early warning mitigation awareness capacity building academic research and second part was long term effect on the environmental upgradation and the climate change adaptation we have undertaken project in gir forest area and few local areas where our climate change actions are showing results within a short time of 2 to 3 years only we had a mix of success odisha achieved 60% reduction in lightning deaths andhra pradesh had achieved 70% reduc reduction in lightning deaths and these two are awarded states but our problem states are three states i'll be very very frank uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar these three states constitute 70% casualty of lightning and they need to take action moving forward i'll keep showing this slide three things we need to do the early warning saves life so you should download damini app and this app will tell you about lightning hazard Forty kilometer in advance. You should know do's and don'ts. क्या करें क्या न करें. वज्रपात के दौरान सुरक्षित रहने के उपाय. पक्के घर में शरण लें. पेड़ों से दूर रहें. अपने आप को छोटा प्रस्तुत करें. बस या कार या घर सुरक्षित है. और अगर आप खुले में फंस जाते हैं, तो आप इस तरीके से कुकड़ी पोजीशन पे बैठिए. और धातु दीवार की वस्तुओं को ना छुएं. � और आपका घर स्कूल कार्यालय मैदान हर जगह लाइटनिंग अरेस्टर जरूर लगाएं ये तीन सूत्री कार्यक्रम अगर हम फॉलो करेंगे तो लाइटनिंग डेथ से बचेंगे और जहां हमने ये काम किया है वहां पे डेथ्स नहीं हुई हैं मैंने आपको सक्सेसफुल राज्यों का दिखाया नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स स्पेशली नागालैंड असम इन लोगों ने काफ़ी काम किया है और वहाँ पर भी लाइटनिंग से डेथ्स में काफ़ी कमी आई है हमारा ये टैगलाइन है जब बिजली करे गर्जना पेड़ के नीचे कभी ना रहना यह मैं आपको बार बार दिखाऊंगा हिंदुस्तान में 1800 से 2000 लोग इसलिए मर जाते हैं क्योंकि लाइटनिंग के दौरान जब वो पेड़ के नीचे खड़े रहते हैं या बारिश के दौरान पेड़ के नीचे खड़े रहते हैं उनको स्टेप वोल्टेज या टच वोल्टेज से चोट लगती है इलेक्ट्रोक्यूशन होता है और वो मर जाते हैं पक्का मकान सबसे सुरक्षित स्थान ध्यान रखिए पक्का मकान सबसे सुरक्षित स्थान पूरे प्रोसेस में मैं आपको लाइटनिंग के बारे में बताऊंगा रिस्क एंड वॉलरेबिलिटी के बारे में बताऊंगा अर्ली वार्निंग एंड डिसमिनेशन मिटिगेशन के बारे में बताऊंगा लाइटनिंग मैंने उत्तर प्रदेश का सैंपल खींच लिया है लाइटनिंग प्रोटेक्शन इन कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड वे फॉरवर्ड ये सारे आस्पेक्ट मैं आपको कम्युनिटी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से बताऊँगा ये नॉलेज ये साइंटिफिक जानकारी हमें कम्युनिटी तक देनी है किसी भी डिजास्टर को जानने से पहले कार्रवाई करने से पहले हमें उस डिजास्टर को समझना होगा मैं बताना चाहता हूं लाइटनिंग एक बिल्कुल अलग तरीके की डिजास्टर है जो अन्य डिजास्टर्स के भिन्न है यहां पे आपको समय नहीं मिलता आपके पलक झपकते लाइटनिंग स्ट्राइक आपको हो जाती है और आपकी जान चली जाती है और ये कोई नया इवेंट नहीं ग्लोबली सबसे सभ्यता एग्जिस्ट करती है ब्रह्मांड एग्जिस्ट करता है लाइटनिंग इज देयर Globally, two million lightning strikes take place any time. But the basic condition for lightning, it is a simple heat moisture convection relation. मैं आपको घर के आम आदमी की भाषा में बताऊं. अगर आप किसी metal plate पे गर्म पानी डालेंगे तो भाप उठती है. वैसे ही हमारी गर्म धरती पे जब moisture आता है तो convection होता है. So heat when it meets the moisture that is cloud, there is a convection, there is a thunderstorm. If it goes up, 
it converts into ice droplets in the language of meteorology we call them grapnel these grapnels collide with each other there is sound produced that is the electromagnetic aspect of it and there are electrostatic charge which is the atmospheric electricity which is produced here we get heat moisture and then uplift the grapnel so the hot land if the moisture is coming definitely the thunderstorm and there will be rain so those are the three indicators is working there are more than 24000 deaths in climate change extreme rising rise in the temperature and moisture gives congenial environment for creation of lightning our aim is lightning deaths must stop mot rukni chahiye and scientific community centric approach our this, this is a complex science our aim is to make the science simple and take it to the community this is the lightning in india we have a vast 7600 square 7600 km of coastal areas we have the himalayan foothills himalayan zone we have the vindhyachal ranges we have the river basins all these are prone to lightning geographical features play a very very important role in lightning and you need multiple early warning systems this is how a lightning looks in the urban areas because of the structure it gets absorbed it does not spread but whenever it falls it social damage in one area just damage is the electrical voltage starts dissipated electrical equipment starts dissipated so this is unfathomable loss for country is due to you say how it is village in case if it you will see it spreads all around first it falls and it spreads this system of the sky the sun ray falls you will find lightning strikes taking place one more most important thing to know it is type of cloud which carries the lightning so in this slide i have given you all clouds together this is a stratus cloud simple layered cloud which you see white color one in the sky stratus cloud if it is round round it is cumulus cloud if the cloud cloud is in this small small fragmented parts then it is cirrus clouds if in black cumulonimbus cloud this black cumulonimbus clouds are the one which bring lightning so as a layman we should know that white clouds are not dangerous the cloud which is dangerous is a cumulonimbus cloud and this is what the cumulonimbus cloud is you can always see so whenever you see a black round round आकाशीय बिजली वाले काले घुंघराले बादल और अगर हल्की सी हवा चल रही हो तो कॉल अ कंडीशन अर्ली वार्निंग फॉर लाइटनिंग एंड द मोमेंट इट इज देयर देयर विल बी लेफ्ट दिस इज अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ थंडर स्टॉम थंडर इज बेसिकली द साउंड व्हिच व्हेन लाइटनिंग कम्स इट मेक्स सो इट इज एंड वेन द लाइटनिंग कम्स फ्रॉम टॉप टू बॉटम इट पुशेज द एटमोस्फेयर अराउंड so there is huge noise so that is a thunder storm in this so far the summary is the mandatory requirement for lightning you need heat you need moisture you need instability due to mixture of heat and moisture you need lift you need convection and development of electrostatic charge and electromagnetic spectrum now i will tell you what all foreign body electrostatic charge and electromagnetic frequency also 
but the foreign elements who are selling sensors in india are detecting electromagnetic spectrum only so that is the difference now how lightning forms this is just a gif file you can see the sun has come up it has heated the world there is convection taking place you can see this animation it's the cumulative number you can see the black cloud and then it charges and now charges flowing down to the so this is how the lightning comes. this is electrostatic charge movement the positive cloud goes on the side of the upper side of the cloud and the negative flows this is just to clear your understanding how the charge flows this is the stage this is magic. this is the dissipation stage of the cloud as long as cloud is in the sky it is called intercloud or intracloud lightning if it strikes whether it is tree electric pole or the house so i hope the theory is clear what is lightning and how it is formed it is a complex science try to present it in, in the simple manner if somebody has high technical question you are most welcome to engage with me one to one so in the whole lightning constituent you see this is a clear cut sky this is a cloud up cumulus cloud light then dissipation stage has come and then a clear sky so you have charge intercloud flashes cloud to ground flashes this is in the range of 1 to 30 megahertz the sensor which has been provided in the country by the foreign suppliers are basically one supplier is in 1 to 12 megahertz range and another supplier the which is with the nrsc is in the 1 to 30 megahertz energy 250 kilojoules current 30 to 180 kilo ampere in fact in our latest mapping we have here and there was a fire in the the temperature is five times the temperature of sun that is 50 50000 degree centigrade the voltage is in thousands to lakhs so the lightning scenario cumulonimbus cloud light wind kale ghane bal badal or halki hawa jab aaye you take it that natural early warning for lightning is there whenever there is a thunderstorm it's a signal for lightning all thunderstorms do not culminate into lightning but every lightning is generally preceded by thunderstorm every lightning is preceded by thunderstorm but say what size not whenever there is heavy rain cloudburst cyclone and there is dry lightning also this rise of electric charge the atmosphere is a natural phenomena and every day at you know indian time 1930 and greenwich time 1400 hours there is neutralization of charge from the sky to the ground and it is more pronounced in the equators and those positive charge from the atmosphere negative charge from the atmosphere neutralizes to the earth so lightning is not only a curse it is a blessing also it is a blessing by almighty that before we go for cropping season he makes our soil fertile that is by a process called nitrogen fixation you know after our cropping season the soil is found deficient of nitrogen but in our atmosphere we have 79% plus nitrogen that as atmospheric nitrogen is brought down from atmosphere to your soil by a phenomena called lightning nitrogen fixation lightning also facilitates ozone formation which absorbs the ultraviolet rays which protects us from the ill effects of ultraviolet rays lightning in jharkhand chatisgarh and odisha west bengal causes mushrooms and button mushrooms to grow which is a rich, rich source of calcium and medication and lightning is a high source of energy researches are on to store it but we have not yet succeeded but if it is stored i can assure you that one lightning strike can give lightning electricity supply many districts as far as thing is concerned how it strikes it strikes the tree if it is rightly this is not much this play maximum and it moves out you can see the circle 
उसके दोनों पंजे चिपके होते हैं There is no step voltage, but the moment you step it, separate it, the charge enters from one side and comes out from other side, and you are electrocuted. And it is more pronounced in case of animals because they are four-legged. There is higher step voltage, and whenever they suffer the electrocution due to lightning, they jump and they. You have seen the death of elephants in Assam last year, 21st May. Just to make it simply understandable. vertical lightning is like this lateral lightning strike is like this the large number of farmers which you keep seeing dying in the river basin states that is a bihar uttar pradesh assam madhya pradesh is not due to vertical strike it is a lateral strike which spreads and kills people so it is very very dangerous now here i have again explained it this is a touch voltage and it spreads this is a step voltage what effects it carries out You see our heart has a pulse. The pulse goes in a in a full form. It is a vessel which makes your heart beat. Due to lightning, this valve gets fused, and your pulse may stop. So the pumping of blood into your body will stop. So the first thing what we say, you do you do CPR, cardio pulmonary resuscitation is the first. So first thing what happens is your Valve in your heart gets affected. You may get a cardiac failure due to the effect on your valve. You may get arrhythmia. Your pulse rate may get disturbed. Your respiratory problem may start. You get burn injury. You get muscular contraction. And so the treatment should be according. And you may have your ear diaphragm. You may have your ear diaphragm, you know, closed. It's your damage due to this. So these are the effects, and treatment should be that. So the overall impact is electric shock, failure of electrical and electronic devices, physical damage, loss of human and animal life, loss of service to the public, loss of cultural heritage. You saw the Amir Fort, Dwarka Di Temple. You saw the Udaipur Palace being hit last year. It's all due to the poor quality of lightning protection system, which I'll subsequently be dealing. and there is a huge economic losses the moment electricity is stripped the entire business stops so you need to have a lightning safe environment this is a act which i would like all of you to see Can you hear this? Shreya, आवाज आ रही? Yes sir. अरे लता पंखा करने वाला है. बरगद चौड़े पेड़ के नीचे. Yes sir. आवाज आ रही. हाँ चलो 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 चलो. शाहार. अचानक घने बादल, तेज हवा, बिजली की चमक, वर्षा और गड़बड़ाहट की आवाज सुनकर मुझे या एकल पेड़ों के नीचे ना जाएं. एक साथ कई आदमी इकट्ठा न हो इसलिए तुम्हें हल चलाते रोकने या अन्य कार्य कर रहे व्यक्ति तुरंत सूखे एवं सुरक्षित स्थान पर आ जाएं तैराकी कर रहे लोग मछुआरे आदि अविलंब पानी से बाहर निकल जाए यदि आप एक खलिहान में काम कर रहे हो और किसी सुरक्षित स्थान की शरण न ले पाए हो तो जहाँ है वही रहे हो सके तो पैरों के नीचे सूखी चीजें जैसे लकड़ी प्लास्टिक पूरा या सूखे पत्ते रख ले जमीन आरोप न लेटे धातु से बने कृषि यंत्र डंडा आदि से अपने को दूर कर लें। धातु के डंडी वाली छाती का उपयोग न करें यदि आप घर पे हो तो बिजली से चलने वाले यंत्र को बंद कर दें। सो सिटीजन साइंस अप्रोच इज रिक्वायर्ड टू लाइट सेफ्टी यू शुड नो द लाइटनिंग यू शुड नो द डिटेक्शन पैरामीटर्स यू शुड नो द फोरकास्ट वॉट इज टू बी फोरकास्टेड लोकल लेवल पे डिसेमिनेशन डिसेमिनेशन लोकलाइजेशन इज मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट रेस्पॉन्स मैकेजम लाइटनिंग इज सच ए डिजास्टर वी आर नो बडी विल कम यू हैव टू रिएक्ट योर सेल्फ 
So life safety should become your nature. What to do, what not to do. Mitigation, research and development by community, local academia, corporate and other agencies. Coming on to lightning early warning, whenever there is black cloud, light breeze, you will have your hair rise on your body. You will get goosebumps. So that's an indicator of lightning early warning. There is five second rule, which is basically taken out by the speed of sound and the speed of Whenever there is lightning, you find the sky. And lightning travels at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. And the sound travels with a speed of 330 meters per second. So a speed with almost about 2 lakh kilometers per second and a speed of 330 meters per second. This difference is utilized. The moment you see flash, you start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you hear the sound, it means lightning is 1 mile away. If you can count up to 10, lightning is 2 mile away. If you can count up to 50, it is lightning 10 mile away. You must utilize this early warning lead time to firstly put yourself into a safe position and then you should alert your friends, families and people whom you know who are exposed to a safer position. As far as the early warning network is concerned, India has INSAT 3D satellite and India is also taking help of the satellites from other countries in detecting lightning. India has a network of Doppler weather radar, which I am showing you. These radars are basically two-way scanning, vertical scanning and lateral scanning also. They are in the X-band and S-band, so a complete frequency detection is there. Then we have a lightning detection network. There are 83 sensors. They are maintained by the India Institute of Tropical Meteorology, IITM Pune. And these sensors are basically electro in the range of 1 to 30 megahertz. These are the sensors which are mainly from an American company. These are the automatic weather stations which are deployed by India Meteorological Department. And the lead time which is being given is 48 hours, 24 hours and now cast. And also there is a Damini app. And these are the links where these are available. Any common interest person can go to mosam.imd.gov.in and can access these early warnings. So state disaster management authority, district disaster management authority, panchayat level authorities can access on their mobile or the laptop or computer these early warning systems. And to top it all, there's a Damini app. Damini app has been developed and this app is now being converted into all the languages of India. As of now, it exists in English and Hindi. You can download it from Google Play Store. The link is given here. Please download this app. Do not get diverted from other resources because there are states who did not download it. And when the lightning was there, there was large number of more than 100 deaths in a day. Why? Because the private operator had given a app and that app failed because of small bandwidth. So this is a redundant, very, very powerful app. Please use this app. There is Meghdut Farmers Mobile app and Emergency Operation Center. This is the biggest weak link in our disaster management system. Barring few states, most of the states do not have a proper emergency operation center. And District Emergency Operation Center, needless to say, if the state level EOCs are not proper, the district EOCs need to be set up. And so the EOC at block level and panchayat level. I would reiterate, emergency operation center is heart of the complete lightning disaster management. If you do not have this, whole early warning dissemination, it suffers. So please, at state level, district level, block level, panchayat level, must create emergency operation center. We also have electric feed based point early warning system, which we have made. This made by us in India costs around five to six lakh rupees, but the one it is imported from abroad is costing around 15 to 16 lakh. And this has a range of 20 kilometer. We also have come out with a public alert devices, which we have validated after a trial with 
India Meteorological Department and Rajasthan State Disaster Management Authority. And we have put a public spe speaker system and public monitoring system where all these early warnings, whether it, it is complied or not, is being monitored. And mind it, everything is automated. The moment it is generated, processed, the API is taken from IMD, it goes to the state EOC and from state EOC, all the locations are geotagged and those geotagged locations announce the early warning in the same language. And these early warning system also de-alert you. It is not that they alert you, they de-alert you when the threat is over, they tell you that now the electric charge is not there in the atmosphere, you can go back to work. This is the longest lightning flash detected so far, 768 kilometer. This was in on 29th April in USA. This was from Ghost Satellite, which is there by the USA, NASA has deployed. India is yet to deploy it. In fact, there are only two countries in the world who has the lightning early warning through the global uh, lightning, GLM, global uh, lightning mapper. That's two with the US and one with China, FY4. India is also in the process of doing it. So lightning early warning, our way forward is, we are into instrumentation, we are into acquiring the space technology, we are into strengthening our ground-based, a combination of space-based observation, radar-based observation, and ground-based observation, local observations, self-reliance in early warning and dissemination. That is the vision of Government of India, and we are working for that. Technical assessment of early warning requirement is very important. States also need to invest in early warning. Most of the states have not invested, except few states. States are taking data services. Data services is not investment. You have outsourced the service. You have to build the capacity of states so that you can employ disaster management professionals in census deployment, operation and maintenance. Our aim is to give employment and self-reliance to India in technology, in operation and maintenance of disaster management equipments. In, in public alert and monitoring system, Damini Mobile App, Mosam Megdun, please popularize it and Aat Nirbhar Bharat, Bharat, that is our approach. As far as the risk vulnerability is concerned, Geographical features matter a lot. Why I am showing Uttar Pradesh? This is a state with Himalayan Tarai region. It is a state with river basin and southern areas have the Vindhyachals. So you see different areas have different seasonality of geographical feature. So it is very important that in the risk assessment of the state, I have gone through 16 states have done the lightning risk assessment barring two. Rest 14 have just done an eyewash. They have copied a disaster management plan and put the risk assessment there. It does not relate to the lightning. So proper risk assessment and identification of seasonality of lightning is very important. Then agroclimatic zone, which are the areas? There are areas which is a you know farming zone. So that is the area when monsoon is there, maximum lightning will be there. There are areas which are hills, so the different pattern of lightning will be there. So it is very important to know the agroclimatic regions. And then soil pattern. You know, there are two things which matter. One is the atmospheric electricity. You should know what strength of electricity is going to hit you. And second is the soil resistance. Because once the electricity strikes you, only solution is you can earth resistance if the soil is high, then your earthing device will not work. So, the drops are there. The lightning, I think, has done at least 30 to 40 feet. There are tape earthing methods. There are multiple bondings which are done. But our aim is that we should do a proper risk assessment and regulate it properly. Mortality due to lightning, India contributes one of the highest 10% deaths of the world. And in India, out of the all natural, and this is the average lightning trend. And this is the district-wise mortality we have shown. Analysis of mortality, if you see, in a state, 
it will come out to say like Uttar Pradesh, lightning mortality is 1.4 deaths per million. India, it is 1.92. But if you go district wise, Sonbadar district 17.6, Mirzapur 14.1, similar could be state with other states. So the lightning risk assessment has to be done at a local level. A state wise risk assessment or a national risk assessment does not relate to the ground reality. So every district and even districts are big in India. A district has river basin, a district has hills areas. So both these areas will have different risk vulnerability. Lightning mortality to animal. We take it out of one death of human, there are eight deaths of animal. That is the ratio. In Uttar Pradesh itself, last to last year, we had 11,000 cows died. Why? Because their sheds were made of tin. As far as research is concerned, we have done the complete mapping of lightning and we are going to release our third report on 16 June this year. We also must know how this forms. You see, Bay of Bengal is the biggest source of moisture which comes and it serves as the biggest lightning threat to the country. It comes Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh and to the east right up to Bangladesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Assam. Similar we have the western area due to the Arabian Sea. We have the lightning moisture coming up. Third route is the western disturbance. This has become very common. After the erosion of Araulis, this is frequent and this is not only affecting our western region, it creates instability right through and through India up to east. Early winters, we find in December, January lightning strike. This is due to the cyclone. Are put off and they give rise to the trends right to the pulse. And again, we add social economic vulnerability. Important is who is dying. We must know who is dying so that our effort should be focused on them. If we have 96%. And, and people dying are farmers, women, children, cattle grazers, jungle hunters, tribals. We need to focus on them. People, children are, are getting poor development of brain. Why? Because they are scared of lightning. You come to Jharkhand, you come to Ghatshila, Jadugoda, you come to Baripada, Mayurbhanj in Odisha, you come to Bardwan district. In the Rainy season time, there is continuous crackling. I have grown in that area. I belong to that area. And it is so scary to come out. Look at the tribal map and the lightning map. In Jharkhand, 70% death of victims are of tribal victims. Northern Odisha, more than 80% death is of tribals. Death of animals. You see, we don't care for our animals. So during lightning or rain, please do not tie up your animal to a tree and leave them. Do not leave them in open. Please treat them as your own part of the family and bring them under pakka shelter. This is the ownership to lightning disaster. This is our Vajrapath Surakshara. Me and Deputy Commissioner of Ranchi, this we are doing. This continuously we do it in Jharkhand, Bihar and other states. School safety plan. Lightning is not, not incorporated in the national guideline. Please incorporate it. There is no farmer safety plan. Please make a farmer safety plan in Bengal. Rest of the states should also do this policy level intervention. Mitigation. Again, mitigation, we just, a vendor comes and he shows a product and he sells it and goes. Before, like we go to a doctor, before our treatment, we go for our diagnosis. What are our sugar level? What is the cholesterol level? What is the temperature? Similarly, for lightning, we also need to do a proper risk assessment. And in risk assessment, first comes is the community level assessment. A community must identify and which are the safe areas. Say like hilltops, single trees, ponds. These are the dangerous areas. We should also identify which are the safe areas and we should tell people what to do, what not to do. Another feature, 
in the morning if lightning is there it is generally in the eastern side of the hill so when you are on your work livelihood activity your cultivation and all cattle grazing should be on the western side of the hill in the second half if lightning is there generally it is on the western side of the hill so all your activity should be on the other side that is eastern side of the hill these are the few basic local factors which should be told to the people this is a safe area this is a dangerous area this should be known to people in case you are trapped you should put some dry leaves where you are sitting this is lightning protection see i told you lightning strikes you vertically and laterally both so for vertical protection lightning conductor or lightning arrester or faraday's cage methods are there in lightning vertical protection there is a big clash between the american system and european system i find this more as a commercial gimmick one size does not fit all the lightning protection should be planned based on proper risk assessment typology of assets to be protected and many other local factors there is nothing like that only american system is good or only european system is good you can put lightning conductor you can put lightning arrester you can put faraday's cage it is based on the typology of the asset so our interest is not common it is very much important that you should do the proper risk assessment and you should protect vertically and laterally for lateral protection you should have surge protection device there are three types available a type b type composite type all devices what you buy should be a properly tested device and you must see the testing lab mark please do not go on the local indian labs mark there are a lot of wrong lightning protection devices which are available which people are making unfortunately in india the highest lightning testing capacity is 40 kilo ampere by cpri and lightning testing device we are working on it we will be able to set up a lightning high voltage lab within a year plus but till the time we have to depend for certification from abroad and that is what is expected that we should buy a proper tested device design of lightning protection system you must go for lightning risk assessment as per IEC 62305 this is the american system or nfc 417 european system you see whether it is american or european both the countries are advanced countries and both want to save their life so no system will be designed which will endanger their life so let's see the merit of each system and adopt them we should not be biased in our approach towards a particular country or a technology we should see how it helps us in saving life expose the risk in terms of past maximum electrical surge this data is only with the cropsy and wherever you are working please take this data from us we have done it for entire country we'll share it with you free of cost type of assets to be protected that's very important third party audit of lightning protection system is mandatory when you go for technical specification vendor will set up but what is here set up that should be validated by third party audit and cropsy is doing this third party audit you must get it verified whether right stuff has been installed or not as far as the lightning protection device is concerned there are three important things aim is to catch the lightning from the atmosphere and earth it how it is done there is a air terminal there's a down conductor and there's a grounding earthing rod so these three are important whether it is american european system iec 62305 or nfc standards both work on the same principle the difference comes here in the air terminal in the iec devices it's a passive device and lightning conductor is there there are two type of methods one is the angle protection method where 45 degree area is protected and second is the mesh method which is basically a faraday's cage method these are passive devices once you go for lightning protection you must see the atmospheric electric surge i must tell you that in our measurements of lightning atmospheric electricity for year 2021 22 we have found electricity electric surge of 130 to 300 kilo ampere so any device tested below this is not fit is not secure not safe as soil resistance is gone high why because of the rapid concretization depletion of the water bodies depletion in the underground water table 
So all these have led to the high soil resistance and the electrical sensitivity. The construction, when it takes place in our country, we do the structural testing, soil structure, stress test, but none of the architects and structural engineers advise you to go for electrical sensitivity. Whenever you construct a house, you must get this electrical sensitivity test done so that your entire electrical fixture in the house is designed accordingly. I will just give you an example, say like in case of Uttar Pradesh, the old map, which again, the young professionals had prepared the concept note, they have again used the same map. Here, if you see the lightning intensity, current intensity is 20 to 80 kilo ampere. This is 1980 to 2010 data. And latest as of 2021-22, the current amplitude has gone up to 130 to 310 kilo ampere. So that is the difference where the climate change has brought us. And that is the atmospheric electricity has gone this high. This is just a component trying to tell you what are the uh, symbolic diagram. You should have a lightning rod. You should have a mounting base. When you are bringing down this down conductor, there should be an insulated devices in between the metal wire and the roof and the wall. And then it, there should be a proper bonding. This is a conventional air terminal. This is a what Franklin was a scientist who at first designed the lightning protection system. He, initially, he, he had flown a kite, he developed a rod, and air terminal was there. And any area 45 degree in the shadow is protected. In the normal house, in a village house, in a normal paka house, this is the one which is kept. And this protects 45 degree area around. This is the vertical protection part I'm talking about. This is the principle we have utilized in making innovative local made lighting arresters in villages. And that is purely as per the IEC 62305. There is another Faraday's cage method. Here, Faraday was a scientist who came out with a principle that inside a metal enclosed structure, the electric field is zero. When he came out with a science, he was jailed. When he came out, he designed again a metal cage, put a glass window, connected it to lightning, electricity, had his bed inside, food inside. He locked himself inside two days and he proved that nothing happens if you are in a metal enclosed structure. And that is how we say that a car is safe, a bus is safe. And similarly, if you do this Faraday's cage, in fact, whenever you construct a house, your architect, your structural engineer should advise you that in your pillars, you must put metals and you make this as cage. You will not be required to do a patchwork of installing the lightning conductor or arrester later on. But unfortunately, in our country, we, these are not told during the construction by our, by our structural engineer or electrical consultant or the architect. This is the best. Eiffel Tower was a Faraday's cage. Later on, when European came with the suitable ESE, they also deployed ESE system over there. World Trade Center is based on Faraday's cage and ESE system. Burj Khalifa is based on the ESE system. This is the ESC terminal, which has basically a terminal. This is an active device and the terminal due to Corona effects attracts all the negative lightning and earths it. And in case of positive lightning, it reflects it back. This you can see the step ladder going back to the atmosphere. And this is the latest picture of lightning on Eiffel Tower on 4th June, where ESC is arresting the lightning. The advantage of ESC is that today the lightning frequency has become very, very fast. Within 0 0.5 milliseconds, you will have 10 strikes. Those strikes are taken by a ESC based devices. In ESC also, there is a lot of advancements. In IEC also, there is a lot of advancement. So the protection has to be designed based on the typology of asset, anticipated threat, and the criticality of the asset. This is the proper IEC based devices, which low cost device we have developed it for rural areas, which we are using it in Tripura, Jharkhand, Odisha, and Bihar. And it has yielded results. So far, there has been no accident. And it is properly as per the IEC 62305. There are a lot of criticism of me in particular by vendors 
They say it is not a device, but this is properly IEC 62305. I invite them if they can add some improvement in this. In rural areas, the poultry houses, the damaged tin houses, these are the pictures. So we have come out with a cycle rim, with a metal plate, and a proper minimum 14 millimeter wire if it can be dug, and a local traditional lightning arrestor conductor can be made. And a farmer can, wherever he is farming, he can just put it 45 degree shadow area. It amounts around one to two acres, depending on the height of the metal plate. You can do the farming. And when you're going to the next area, do it. Mind it, we live in India and 96% deaths is of rural India. And the maximum affected people are farmers. On 25th June 2020, when 103 people died in Bihar, out of the 183, 92 people were farmers. So where are we? Let's focus on the farmer and save their life. There is no point distributing 4 lakh rupees after each death. Let's invest some hundreds of rupees and some local innovation. Give lightning protection to them. You can see this field and people are doing safe farming there. You can see this school in West Bengal. You can see this lightning protection devices locally being made in Jharkhand. The methods is there. You see a rester, a lightning conductor, you must see that they are tested at proper standard. Whether it is a rester, whether it is your down conductor, or whether it is your earthing device. They all need to be tested for minimum 200 kilo ampere. So that's important. Testing is very, very important. When you are doing this, you ensure that this is the highest point. In fact, next session when we'll have, we will show you that how can you do it locally. Locally also, the local trend is you can make a mixture of the earthing. For earthing, we need charging rod, chemical rod, and in that you put the this mixture of charcoal, sand, and salt, and the conductivity will be more, and the conductivity will be more. Coming on to awareness, capacity building, awareness, education can save 70% deaths from lightning. And they are the people who need to be told. If you have not told the lady in the house how to react, it is half job done. What happens in village areas? Generally, ladies put their clothes for drying up in the open on a wire. As the lightning thunderstorm comes, they rush out there to pick up the clothes. As they approach the wire, the lightning hits the wire and the ladies suffer. Five second rule, I have told you. Natural early warning sign, I have told you. Whenever there's black cloud, light breeze, you will get the goosebumps, your hairs will rise. This is the posters which we are using. This is with the most of the states. Our tagline is, Jab bijli kare garjana, ped ke niche kabhi na rehna. When lightning roars, never stand under tree or out door. Don't take selfie. On 11 July 2021, 18 youths lost their life at Amir Fort. And one youth, one brother sister from Jalandhar were there. And as the sister lost the life, the brother rang up mother. Ma, Didi ka lightning se death ho gaya hai. And next strike was on the brother. So brother sisters both lost life. Don't take selfie during lightning. Complete lightning resources, whatever has been made by everybody, has been hosted by National Disaster Management Authority. The lightning early awareness, various IC material, videos, posters, they are there on this link. Please visit this link and take benefit. Please keep your doors and windows closed during lightning. This is to prevent yourself from the lateral devices. This has been made by our intern from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Ms. Sangavi Kennedy. We get interns and we have put in, interns into the research activity on lightning. We are going to set up an international lightning research development center and we are creating a cadre of lightning professionals. So young professionals, you are welcome to the lightning domain. Whenever there is lightning, you should not wash your utensil, you should not take bath because your tap water may carry the lightning current. 
I was saying whenever you get taught, you present yourself small. That is, you sit like this position. Your heels should be together. Why heels together? So that there is no step voltage. Pao ke beach mein distance ho na chahiye. Just say ki step voltage now. Step voltage nahi yoga pao chipke rengi to bijli guzar jayegi. Light will cross and you will not get electrocuted. Hands over the ears just to prevent the deafening from lightning strikes and the thunder. Football fields are not safe. But in villages, you can install lightning arrestor here at two corners here, diagonally opposite, and you can play. School, home, car is safe. These are my famous slides. And whenever in, they're in your house, office, school, install lightning conductor. Our aim is to reduce lightning deaths to zero. For USA, in 1940, they started. It took them 81 years to bring down their lightning deaths from 432 to 21. And again, this year, 2022, US has crossed 21 marks and they are now at 32 lightning deaths. So it is not easy to prevent deaths. But as per our national policy, we aim for zero lightning deaths. We are with the government pursuing them to notify lightning as a disaster. So far, 16 states have notified National Lightning Risk Management Program is in the process and hopefully by mid this year or early next year, it will see light of the day. Impact-based early warning to community, we are trying to create that and we request, it is a collective effort. No government, no organization can do it alone. All government, academia, corporate, private industries, community, everyone has to come together and take it as a collective effort to ensure dissemination to last mile and reduce lightning deaths. Lightning safety training programs, PROPSI is carrying out and we have carried out master trainers programs in many states. These are basically in the sector of agriculture, school children, animal husbandry, fishermen, hilly, tribal areas, industries. So we are carrying out a capacity building program one-to-one -one with the state and there are 23 states who have done the memorandum of understanding with Cropsy, and we are working directly with them. Our model of business, since we complement government, we do not go on tender. We do not go on tender. Ensure lightning risk audit as a culture, devices to max infrastructure, promotion to innovation, research and development, lightning data management center. We are on the job and hopefully it should be ready within next four months. Adopted climate change, grassroots level adaptation. Recommendation is we must have a community-centric approach. Lightning risk and vulnerability assessment at local level. Invest in lightning early warning and dissemination. Please collaborate with India Med Department. You can invest also and you can create a joint mosaic and dissemination system. Private industries are welcome to complement the efforts of our Ministry of Earth Science and Indian Space Research Organization. Collaborative efforts are always more powerful and better. Wherever the gap is there, private industries are welcome to complement and add value to services. Mitigation, mass scale installation of lighting protection system is required. Capacity building is required in awareness, in early warning, prevention, mitigation, tools and tools, lightning audit, and in our country. We just believe in prevention, mitigation, response, mitigation, reconstruction. The element of risk transfer is missing. Let's have risk transfer mechanism introduced. Let's have, because no insurance industry is going to pay an industry if you don't have a proper lightning arrestor or a conductor. Similarly, lightning deaths, there should be a risk transfer mechanism. And individuals should be doing their own risk transfer system by resorting to various research and development, climate action, lightning resilience program, and lightning data management system are required. And microzonation of hotspots, we are there to help you. We have the data, we'll share. Lightning early warning, come safe shelter. We have made in few states in agriculture field. It is a early warning center, come dissemination center, come entertainment center. If you go to US, you go to the Transmetro, you will see a lot of such relief centers. 
on the similar model we have done this electrical sensitivity mapping we have done it it's a dynamic process and this will go on soil resistance mapping we have done setting up lightning research and development center it's proposed lightning is important local level this is the seasonal program i showed you monsoon is coming this is the time villagers and farmers should be approached when streaming lightning in dm plan is to be done state has got disaster management plans but lightning is not there gujarat has just introduced we need to have a proper action plan on this policy level intervention in building bylaws if you have if you know organizing the you know standards moefcc energy farmers animal husbandry temples water resources these are the areas where we need a policy level intervention with this i can only say this due to lightning can be 100% avoidable i can only say this because in jharkhand we have a city called devgarh we made the city lightning safe city and since 2014 there has been no death i belong to a village which is named bajarmara bajar means lightning death means death there used to be 18 to 20 deaths every year in my village since 2015 onwards there has been no death we have a jharkhand cricket association stadium we have jharkhand birsa munda airport there has been no death so if you take proper scientific systematic approach lightning is 100% avoidable over to you sir thank you very much sir it was a very detailed presentation so you started with how you learned and how you uh, started your interest in this field and after that you have shared the view about lightning resilient india campaign case study of up read things about the early warning system technologies structural engineering uh, for the lightning resilient constructions and in the last you shared the aim and recommendations what should we follow so uh, thank you very much sir for a detailed presentation uh, there is a question in the chat box by bholeshwar nath upadhyay uh, he said that uh, whether mobile should be turned off in case of lightning and fall uh, it's a good question thank you mr nath bholeshwar nath ji for this question you see as far as the mobile set is concerned the as far as the power output is concerned the power output from mobile set is 1.5 watt so it is insignificant as far as the energy content which the lightning has but the when you take the selfie or photograph these flashes connect the lightning flashes so that has attracted lightning and many cases have come to know that there have been people holding mobile phone and they have been hit even four days back on thursday there was a young student with his friend sing it sitting at the gopalpur beach and he was talking on mobile and there was small breeze and cloud and lightning came and the boy ajit kumar is no more and his girlfriend is battling for life so it is a lightning it is a flash which is generated by mobile while clicking the photograph which connects as a precautionary measure we suggest during lightning do not use mobile i hope i have answered you Thank yeah you very much sir yeah uh in fact uh, yeah it is a excellent uh, coverage of the entire lightning that which uh, you have covered in this short period of time and moreover the kind of message uh, that you have given is uh, really uh really relevant and the case histories that you have presented and also that mitigation measures including the cycle cycle ring that whichever is a desi system that you have shown and the kind of uh, inspiration that you are giving throughout the country uh, that wherever whether it is school or open area uh, wherever in the uh, what kind of protection which can be carryable Uh, which can be carried like uh, people are in the field and they are doing whatever field work then they are itself 
that using a bamboo and the kind of uh, system that you have shown how in their working area they can protect themselves instantly and that is uh, the something that uh, really uh, wonderful amalgamation of uh, 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 of a science and knowing of the natures and which is called hyperphysics area this uh, whatever lightning and whichever is happening here uh, there are scientific uh, uh, temperament in this area is so versed uh, that uh, which uh, you have made it uh, to simplifying that to protect people especially showing the uh, national data that which state which location which district and what what are the type of uh, people like uh, tribal people or village people that who are highly unprotected so giving all kinds of this database and uh, and also giving a awareness to all and also having a mou with uh, the states that all the states and districts that were your uh, climate resilient uh, promotion uh, council uh, uh, that has been steering enough uh, not i would say enough because uh, your lifetime you have been doing now you have dedicated yourself i think that in this uh, uh, presentation that you have made uh, which i'm sure with all our participants and across the country uh, that we have got a taste of that uh, really uh, the not only the science of part of that but the kind of statistics that uh, you have shown in the form of uh, some slogan and as well as what to do what not to do and what kind of protections they can do at their own local level with the community level uh, and also for the buildings and other things what kind of protection measures uh, that to be taken so it is a complete coverage of uh, very much understanding about the signs and the dangers and then vulnerable areas and then what are the measures not costly but locally that can be adopted by each and every individual uh, i think uh, that is really fantastic thank you very much thank you so much sir and uh... I would also appeal that this is a work by very few select people. This sort of work needs replication by every district, every village, every panchayat. And we need more entrepreneurs and we are we need more local researchers. So Cropsy will be happy to host these people, promote these people, and we'll be happy if we can replicate. We are a big country, sir. We are not a country. We are a country of countries. So we need to have large participation from everybody. I need more Sanjay Srivastava. I need more Chandan Ghosh, you know, in the country. You can you know, spread good messages. I, I want more Garima Agarwal. I want more Shreyas, more Kostu Saha to focus on saving life of people, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I think uh, to carry forward the momentum that you have uh, generated, and there's almost one hour plus. Uh, that it is something that now I think uh, that let it be now coast up. Huh? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So for the next session, I would like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Kosta Sahadi. He is the founder of Seven Digital, a full range of agriculture and innovation counseling firm. Our Costa sir has an extensive experience in technology and digital solutions for the agricultural world with the emphasis, uh, emphasis on IoT sensors, helping the farmers optimize growth and maximize profits through innovative technology. He is also a ham and he have a great range uh, of knowledge related to the technological field. So uh, about the lightning, uh, we are here to uh, listen what he have for us. So welcome, sir. And I have shared the presentation presenter uh, right to you. And uh, uh, as you asked, Mr. Mr. Sankar Das is on the panelist also. So okay. he is here. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shreyas. And uh, thank you, Prashra Ghosh and Sanjay ji. It was a very uh, nice and uh, 
elaborate uh, presentation on all the details of the states and captured all uh, things very, very well. Uh, nationally coordinated events are happening and uh, we have a lot of inputs and a lot of, uh, you know, early warning systems. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, disaster has got no boundaries. It is not limited to one state or one country. Nowadays, we have forecasts which are coming globally. So, so local and global forecast, whatever is the uh, forecast, it is concerned, as uh, Mr. Sanjay rightly highlighted, uh, to our farmers or to the people who are outdoors, who are not aware, like what is going to happen next in the next 15 minutes or next two hours. So, yes, uh, sitting in Delhi NCR uh, or some other place, we have our local smartphones, we get the alerts and all. But a farmer, when he goes to a farm and does his farming or his cattle grazing, does not have any much thing to rely upon. Even if he has got a small uh, phone, he will like to keep it uh, in some place and do the work and come back. So in that terms, uh, what uh, we uh, we think that a lot of students and a lot of universities should come up with small small devices and you know they they can put it up on different village level programs and there should be sound alerts. We 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 can create a sound alert or maybe a siren in that village which can actually alert the people to come back to their homes as soon as they hear that siren. So that is that is the uh, level of uh, work which is required much more nowadays to alert people. So I'll, uh, I'd like to show you one small device as uh, uh, Sarah requested for a, a live demo. I could not arrange much, but I will connect you with uh, uh, a village in uh, near to Shiliguri. It is uh, near to Shiliguri, 50 kilometers off Shiliguri. A lot of uh, bad weather happens out there. And uh, I'll show you a device. If you can just uh, see the device, uh, this is a small device, uh, which is a live device at this moment. Uh, is it visible? Uh, if yeah. You can just yeah. Confirm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a small device which we uh, every every student and all other universities can develop an upon. We'll show you the internal. It's, it's containing a, a Raspberry Pi along with a antenna system and some other gadgets out here, which is a battery. It's powered with a battery bank, or you can put up with a solar power also. And uh, uh, this saying so, I would like to show you. Larger, uh, larger equipment than the antenna. There's a bigger antennas, uh, which has the device you know mounted on top of the boom itself. This is the device which has been mounted out here. So this actually uh, picks up the signal not only from the local uh, 300, 400, or 500 kilometers, let's say and uh, gets the input that there is a bad weather happening somewhere nearby. So that is one. Second, it is also if internet is available somewhere, then it can pull up the you know messages from the internet or if it is having a cellular uh, environment or a mobile network, so it can pick up SMS and further, it will uh, plot in a global uh, database on a, on a dashboard. I will show you one of the dashboard like uh, just a second. So this 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 will actually help you uh, uh, see what is actually happening. Uh, one second. Uh, I have got the rights right uh, to share. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, I, I am not able to do that. OK, uh, can you can you take uh, the other participants, Saikat Das, uh, live? Uh, I'll show mm. a live station. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Saikat? He is live. Yeah, he is in the uh, panel. Yeah, yeah yes, Saikat, uh, welcome to the panel. And uh, 
can you switch on your video can you switch yeah. on your video yeah, i would like to see you yeah please give your brief introduction yourself <laughs> uh, my name is saikat das i am from dharampur village uh, dharampur near siliguri west bengal basically uh -huh. i am electronics engineer uh, i will show our station air monitor uh, air ion monitoring station uh, can you hear me yes yes saikat go ahead yes yes sir. yeah we can Saikat, you can sh show your video so that uh, we can see the yes sir. station setup. Uh, that is a station setup. That is a data logger for data 24 into 7. Um, save the data. Yeah. Uh, can you sell, uh, can you sell this, uh, this system? Can you see? Yeah, yeah, it is seen. So this is the system where what has been implemented at the field, the same setup which I showed from my uh, office out here, uh, same uh, setup he is using at his uh, premises and uh, it actually uh, is connected to a antenna, a ground antenna also. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, that yeah. is ground okay. antenna. So this is a live, live station. Oh. You can see this is a live station and it is picking up signals. You can see that flashing LED. It is some some signal which is being picked up and it is being uh. processed. Uh, Saikat, can you just uh, be a bit stable with the camera? Uh, uh, the video camera, yes, yes, yes we can see that. Uh, so this is picking up the signal and it is connected to an external, you know, uh, siren type of uh, loudspeaker or amplified, uh, amplified speaker system which actually gives the alert to the nearby community so he uh, second can you come back to the first uh, device yes sir yeah so this processes the signal uh, a little bit closer it is a little bit hazy Saikat. i think you are uh, uh -huh. see this uh -huh. is the this is the problem because he is in a remote station and he does not have much of internet so he has to have a local setup where he uh, he he is not able to understand what the internet is giving him the alert. So he has we have created a local station out there uh, and uh, is getting all the signals. Uh, uh, Saikat, uh, can you just uh, stop the video and once show your antennas outdoor? You can pause the video, go outdoor and show your antenna also the ground antenna, if that is possible, Saikat. Uh, at now, sir, I will. Uh, yeah, you show the connection. Uh, okay, sir yeah 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 so so he will show it so i will come back to my part out here so what we mean to say is like uh, we are using a, a, a l and c this is a coil you can see uh, if, if, if the entering students are there this is uh, this is a coil so this coil is actually uh, getting resonance with a capacitor l and c combination so as uh, we know that lightning has got a particular frequency of operation. So whenever we, we, we see lightning, uh, the frequency of operation is quite wide. It's from 1 hertz to 30 megahertz. Uh, but the spectrum uh, peaks up from the 5 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. So 5 to 10 kilohertz is li lightning spectrum. So we make use of this type of coils. And... Uh, is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. Visible. Yeah. 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 So, so small pipe and copper wire. So this this has a particular diameter and number of curves are there. Very easy to make and can be commercially developed also. Uh, then uh, resonating this with the help of a capacitor gives you a lot of uh, frequency, you know, adjustment in the range of the lightning. So when it resonates with a nearby lightning, so there is a activation of a relay and the sound alert is there. So this is a very localized setup. Okay, so if internet is available, we will pull in the data. As Mr. Sanjay said that there are a lot of data verification tools are available nowadays. Even uh, Mr. Sanjay has got uh, different apps also. So, you know, that can get verified and ultimately at the end, uh, the farmer can get an alert. 
there is a loudspeaker which is kept uh, nearby to his temple or his mosque or somewhere and it starts uh, making a loud noise. So the farmer gets to know that there is a, a lightning happening somewhere nearby and he to take shelter of the whole thing. So uh, my, 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 my thing is like, you know, we all sitting in the offices in, in good cities, we have got a lot of internet, we have got a lot of access to presentations and database and all, but the poor farmer does not have that. The poor, the poor uh, people who are staying outdoors and they do not know how to use all these tools and methods, they are not having that. For them, uh, audio alert is what they can have a great uh, benefit to save their lives. So let me just quickly check. Uh, Saikat, are you uh, able to now show the setup of the antenna also, uh, which is a ground uh, antenna? Uh, hello, sir. And that is yeah. ground antenna, ground based antenna. So see, uh, this is a ground based uh, that... antenna. So, uh, uh, sir, are you able to see that? I think uh, yeah. this is like a pipe which is going inside the earth and uh, it has got a cable which is coming into the station uh, this mm -hmm. is this is something similar to your uh, earthing earth rod which we do for a construction or for a electrical earthing so this actually picks up see very low frequency signals not only travels on on the air but also travels through the uh, earth also so the antenna is below the earth and it is picking up signals from below the earth so whenever there is a lightning strike somewhere 200 kilometers, 100 kilometers. Oh, okay, Saikat, I think that is uh, good enough. Uh, uh, thanks okay, for sir. sharing the video. Thanks for sharing the video. Thank you so Please much. Sir. Thank you so much for adding panel. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Saikat. Okay, so we'll come back to the presentation out here. I'll show you. I'll try to share a, a paper. Just one second. Is my screen visible out here now? Not right now. Not right now, sir. Uh, is now it out, visible? Out. Yes, sir. Now it's visible. Okay. So uh, what I will uh, show you, it is again, uh, I'm showing a station live data uh, uh, from the Shiliguri station itself. So out here, you'll see that uh, the graph which you see uh, has uh, higher peaks and then there is, uh, it suddenly falls down and again, it goes up. So this is the warning system which we got before the event. See, normally, if you see the top part of the left-hand side, top part of the graph, it was at one level, that is 1349. If you can just see that level 1348, 1349, this was the level where we were getting uh, the frequency monitored. Suddenly, there was a drop up to 1343. So you can see from 706 to 707, there was a drop and from 707 to 709, uh, there is again at the same level, then it is again going up at, if you can see 7010, it has gone up to the higher levels. So this means that during this time, there is a air ionization happening and it is happening due to a distant uh, lightning. So this is one station, this is one station. Uh, I, I think, uh, Professor Ghosh, could you see this uh, entire graph? Uh, Screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the type of uh, you know uh, monitoring stations which are available and actively plotting. And when it is uh, when is actually uh, done through a triangulation method, if there are three stations, so we can understand from which direction uh, the lightning strike is coming up. So these are, uh, uh, you know, in a village level, all these graphs and all these things are not possible, but it is, yes, it is possible through implementation of small, small devices, devices at local level and push the information through a loudspeaker or a silent type of environment from a local area to alert the, all the people who are outside. So that is what uh, uh, we can all work upon together along with the, uh, a lot of states which uh, Mr. Sanjay had already well established uh, uh, reach out to the government levels and also uh, Professor Chandan. If we can centrally connect all the states and give a regular uh, routine update to the small devices as an API, 
it can connect and be much more accurate. So I'll pass it on to you, uh, Professor uh, uh, Ghosh, oh. if you can just okay. take it up okay. and okay. carry on. Right. Thank you. So thank you for, uh, sir, for sir, this. I will... Professor huh? Chandra, yeah. Sir, oh, Professor yeah, Chandra, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have like some, some, a... some interaction. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Firstly, my salute <laughs> to Costo for doing this job. You know, wonderful job. And I can understand you are, you know, deciphering with the 5 to 10 kilohertz. And it is important to know that the ground strikes, which are there, cloud to ground strikes, they are generally in the 1 to 10 megahertz zone. So you are generally correcting the right size type of electromagnetic spectrum, you know, the RF energy. Yes, yes. Now the second part which comes uh, as an improvement, you know, uh, it is a very simple object, Gauss meter, you know. We yep. all have studied in our science. If you can also install a Gauss meter and an animo meter along with it. Right. So Gauss meter will give you the atmospheric electric surge you know, intensity there. Yes. And the anemometer will give you the breeze, the direction it is going. Yes. Okay. And I can help you in putting it wherever you are doing with a, our India Meteorological Center national network where your data can be put in and you can do a substantial 100% accurate you know, forecasting in your area. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Sanjay, sir. And the whole whole thing is about uh, lightning and the frequency of the lightning, which we like to work upon. And we are working upon with small, small stations and definitely with, uh, with a collaborative way of approach and with the help of uh, the different governments, it will be, we will definitely save much more lives and we'll make it much more, uh, you know, disaster free from the lightning strikes which are happening very frequently nowadays yes yeah yeah even more so uh, i would say that the kind of devices that you have been able to connect near siliguri and yes. you are showing all those uh, that how it is being installed the earthing and especially uh, protection uh, protection system that to the ground and showing a video let us let us work together uh, to 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 make this kind of things in a workshop, in a workshop mode, even in a school level, huh? Right. Yeah, Sanjay, uh, Colonel Sanjay, even yes, at yes, school sir. level, we have got so many schools are here. They will be they are having many kind of fan clubs are there. Climate club is also there. Now we are promoting to take bioengineering club, something like that. Yes, but bringing One this kind thing, are you, of are you working of with the... having a touch uh, to the reality that what is happening, but uh, Kostov has shown that what kind of flashlights are coming. So we often look at the sky, uh, and look at the sky, or what is happening around, or people gazing at the sky. Uh, we have a, always uh, such kind of attraction. In that case, uh, having some kind of measurements along with the many other devices that which you have mentioned. Uh, we can create one kind of, you know, skill universities are created, our IITs are there, NITs are there, but having a touch with reality and coming out with some kind of detection devices as simple as possible, when uh, Kostov is able to do at his individual level, I think he's having two or three station here at the individual level. Yes. Let us focus it and bring it to the main platform as you, have, you are having a lot of uh, now, uh, collaboration and MOU, the research part that you you are always uh, looking forward. Yes, yes. I think that will be a good way to go to, uh, go to the different levels and uh, uh, this will be very much helpful when, when there is a student or a university plugs in yeah. and people do a lot of other research, a lot of things comes up out there. So, uh, thank you so much for that. And thank you. Uh, another, another area where we are going now, we are now collaborating with the Ministry of Panchayati Raj and every Panchayat, we are planning to have the early warning systems. Hmm. So, one of the areas that the best expertise of Mr. Kostov Saha, we would like to facilitate this 
and uh, unfortunately in india the research has been domain we take it as a domain of only academia or a few scientific bodies it is not so in fact independent researchers community researchers contribute much more in the development and disaster risk management so we would like to promote you know yeah, yeah. innovations like what you have done and uh, we, i in fact after this we'll have a talk and uh, Mr. Costco, when I am back to Delhi tomorrow, I'll have a talk through Professor Chandan Bhosh, sure. and we'll have a program worked out how we are going to take this forward. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Take, take, sure. Sure. It's a yeah, privilege yeah. and fortune to meet people like you. You know. Yeah, yeah. And we welcome, are implementing. Welcome. We are implementing it at uh, at our level, like where you know uh, uh, our small engineer Saikat Das uh, sitting 50, 60 kilometers away from Shiliguri. Uh, in a, in a village environment and he is able to set up at that and he is able to get all the alerts and the data so that that's where the you know the live demonstration uh, is mm. active and can be done yeah over are you working you. to save the save the hills professor vipul rao yeah i didn't get that are you working with professor rao save the hills in uh, no 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 uh, 73 digital is our company uh, and okay. we are mostly into agricultural technology and uh, ah, ah, ah. disaster management and all events out here. It's a pretty new company Chandan out here. Chandan Go sir knows about him. Professor Rao sir, you know. Okay. Ah, ah. We'll connect together, you know. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Excellent. Okay. So, for right. moving forward to our last presentation for today's webinar. I would like yeah. to request our head, Professor Chandan Ghosar, uh, to deliver his thoughts. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go Let's directly start. into presentation. No need of uh... <laughs> introduction. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Just, just uh, share because we are already almost about to be one o'clock. Maybe I yes, take sir. fifteen minutes, not more than that. And our participants, I can see that they are intact since beginning. Yes, sir. Okay, give me the share button. And... Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Shresh, and uh, for taking up this. And uh, it happens that uh, in 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 our presentation that I become party to be on the on the microphone to say something, but to say something on each and every topic. And that has been our uh, motto uh, of uh, in a uh, motto of resilient infrastructure division. There would be a, uh, there would be a, a kind of lecture that uh, which will encompass some of the aspects where we take Vagideri in that, huh? isn't it? So. Yes, sir. So for that uh, matter, that already a uh, lot of the things have been discussed, nothing remained untouched, especially uh, Colonel Sanjay Sivastava, but uh, maybe because I have prepared some slides, so I, I would like to take it from the perspective of lighting protection system, which he has shown in the last uh, part of his presentation that how they look like. So, uh, uh, and he has also men mentioned some of the codes uh, that and I will mention some of the uh, Indian code and requirements that how they have framed even in 1989 onward to till date that what kind of uh, there are 73 page co uh, Indian Bureau of Indian Standard Codes 2309 is there. So I will just quickly go through especially what are the installations how it is to be done and keeping in uh, keeping in touch with what has been covered. So. You see, we are living in an electronic world, and in fact, uh, in this, in this also, uh, uh, previous presenter uh, has been able to connect uh, Sekhar Das in some other place, sitting there, showing that how things are. And we are also having all kinds of electronic uh, devices that we carry, and uh, it has become part and parcel, and that is the way that has given way to such kind of online communication. But what is the futuristic or current development that we want? You see that uh, it is showing that Ecuride may be a company just taken 
and it is giving such kind of lightning alert to a device which is handheld, carryable, which we means to see that wherever he is or she is, whether in the field or ground, the system, early warning system has to be in place. There are a number of such devices placed across the country. And now bringing them, like Damini app is there. Damini app is showing in a very larger scale. But we are becoming now electronic savvy. Means electronic means without mobile phone or without laptop or desktop, uh, without uh, now 5G communication auction is going to come up. So in very soon, we want to have such kind of things available in the mode of in, uh, made in India mode or made in make in India mode that having a device or wearable devices or in the smart watch, wherever we are, because we are having almost uh, 90, 100 crore people are having uh, out of 140, almost 80% or 90% people are having some way of communication using mobile, whether it's smartphone and also ordinary phone. So now thing is, if such kind of devices also will be now made available, this is taken from the some other country they have devised that how many strikes that it is going to give and estimated distance in miles means you can say it is about 20 kilometer away. And we all know that this kind of warning system uh, that when it is 20 kilometer away and it is going to strike one such and many other information can be decorated in a in a wearable devices or electronic devices like us and which claims and as well as things are available with the accuracy of 95 percent or 96 percent accurate accuracy more than 90 percent accuracy is good enough so we have to have this kind of system which are in place but only the information and data being collected they are to be analyzed and bring it to to the common public who are available through such kind of communication devices with the smart devices. Because these are the things when it is to be brought in this mode, then we have to put some of these devices which will collect this data in the field, whichever. So still we have not been in our country able to make or think of making such kind of devices in our country and that is why uh, we have to buy these devices even horn or digital horn, digital siren and everything we are buying and then because we are not able to manufacture or uh, or the kind of perfections the kind of you see that which are placed outside where they are having a range of several hundred kilometers of range and then bringing this system and then putting them into such kind of devices will bring us, in, in fact, early warning, uh, uh, say, alert or giving the distance with an accuracy. There are systems are there that when you get the alarm, that they give an accuracy, even 30 meter, 40 meter, I means 100 feet plus minus accuracy is also there. And when it is giving that, even along with the time, because when it is going to reach, this is not giving, it is also giving that yes, the spot that you are now, it is going to reach to your spot uh, with the information that may be in another 20 minutes or in another 5 minutes or 10 minutes, even up to 40 minutes we have been. The system has been able to detect things 40 minutes in advance before it strike to the place where it gives an accuracy of plus minus 100 feet or 30 meter, you can say. So a person or a field people or wherever they are there, when such kind of devices, along with the installation of these things in the nationwide network, and then when it will give that the place that you are standing with a plus minus 100 feet, after 20 minutes or 25 minutes, uh, uh, thunder ground penetrating thunderbolt is going to come. Then the person, what he will do, then 20 minutes time is there. His job is that to run or to go or even walking 100 feet distance. 100 feet distance, one can go in 10 seconds or 15 seconds of time. 
So what I mean to say that when warning capability is there, devices are there, and warning capability of giving even 30 minutes in advance or 20 minutes in advance with an accuracy of 100 feet or 30 meter, then you see that there is an advancement of technology uh, has been so much uh, for the last two decades that our job is to buy the things or develop the things over the people and get the reduction which is our prime aim, prime aim of reducing the death which has some of the data shown by Kandil Srivastava. The death rate has reduced because the state and district all have taken an enormous effort in disseminating this early warning system. So the, the contemporary way of coming with dissemination system is to bring such kind of smart devices or at least an SMS call to all those non-smart telephone that which are having in our villages, many, almost all of them are having some kind of smartphone, traditional phone, that at least an uh, SMS message will go with the information that the place that wherever you are or in your area that a lightning strike is going to happen. So these are being televised, even being, uh, even through radio communication, uh, also these are being disseminated. The main thing is accurately detecting them with an accuracy of 90% or 80%, whatever percent is possible, based on the data being collected now. And also making our country, where we have identified which are the vulnerable area, a more, you know, uh, authoritative uh, no, representation of the devices like this and bring that early warning uh, capability much more enriched uh, to the extent that possible. So, uh, what I would like to see uh, show uh, is that uh, like, uh, okay, yeah. I would like to show here is that I have, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, say specifications, that the, the latest one, like in India, I said that I will show you that PIS has made in standard uh, IS 2309, but I will go into some of the technical specification, but mostly understandable uh, for, uh, for those that who are constructing buildings, monuments, or storing uh, some of the things like, like like the crude oil in the offshore area, lightning can strike there also. So what kind of meticulous specification given? That I'll go uh, quickly. So here, that NFPA, NFPA means National uh, say Fire Protection Agency, the code number 780. In fact, they started these things more than 115 years back and standard for the installation of lightning protection system, which is adopted, in fact, in just only two years back. So standards for the installation of lightning protection system, most of the things I'm going to, I'm just giving you the screenshot of these things, that what we really mean, that we'll go a little bit of that with more details, uh, how it is doing. In fact, installation of lightning protection system, uh, it is a BIS, uh, it is a NFPA standard, uh, which, uh, as I said, it is being submitted in April 28, 2019, with an effective date of just hardly uh, less than three weeks. And you can think of those who are involved with our uh, system of processing. Uh, of uh, developing such kind of codal provisions in our system uh, that uh, we are also doing similar kind of exercise. Even with online, we have been doing much faster, much speedier and efficiently. But earlier, it used to take, after submission of the first draft, sometimes it takes uh, maybe a few years or maybe decade that things are not being developed. But now it has become faster. But here you would like to see that uh, only 28th April it was submitted with an effective date from this. I mean, that is the kind of speedy. And they have published it in 2020, which is freely available, this document. 
primarily that uh, my main focus is uh, that even you see uh, this kind of standards while they do develop they take cognizance of previous standards that they have so a significant space is given to see that how uh, this kind of standard like 780 has been developed so since 1904 in this case to till date they give a summary that what are the new things that they have added and what are the uh, old things that they, they have not taken. So while developing such kind of standard, in fact, I have not yet seen in our BIS standards that when new version comes, sometimes it takes three years, sometimes it takes even 30 years, or sometimes it takes 40 years that no changes has occurred, or although things have been developed. But in this standard, you in this kind of international standards like NFPA, federal uh, such an agency, they show that whatever previous standard have been made, and in the new standard, what are the, what are the changes, addition, modification? They show with certain symbol that this was so that whenever you uh, uh, whenever you make out such kind of standard, it says that it supersedes all previous edition. Now you think that in case of seismic code, uh, we have been revising it because as and when we are updating. 1962, we are having seven zone. Then we have got to uh, five zone. Uh, then we have got now four zone. But only few nodes are there, but in our current seismic code of 2016 or NBC 2016, whatever changes that we have done in 1962, 1988, 1993, 2002, or something like that, those things are not indicated. Though we revise it, some notes are there, but in this standard especially, you will see when you go through that with all PDF versions and everything is there, then you will see that what are the modifications, because by saying that, it supersedes all previous edition. So the people and experts that use, uh, experts that who have been deliberating on this subject, then whatever have been developed before this uh, uh, days, what are the new changes they have brought in? So they highlight in the current edition. So this is what just I wanted to emphasize. Ultimate, our thing is what are the lightning protection system? Uh, this is uh, just, uh, what is that distance that we can see when it is at longer one then and then what kind of distance and these are all calculation 45 degree like uh, likelihood of spread if we take a vertical rod must not exceeding a height of 15 meter then it takes that uh, this much area the house so this is what that in the uh, Colonel uh, Sanjay Sivastav that indicated uh, even with a cycle spoke and other things that what kind of protection that it generally provides when we we, we, sh we shall be able to make such kind of conductive rod to the ground and, and then what are the likelihood of their protected areas and zone like when in a building uh, when we provide like yellow colored things that uh, or these red colored things that are there. So these are the kind of system that has to be there in, ki in case of building. And uh, these are mandatory provisions that have to be provided at which place and how it is to be installed. So uh, this one the, uh, provides the traditional lighting protection system installation requirement the, the code that which I am mentioning for the following like ordinary structure I will not go into all details just only ordinary structure like I have shown few pictures miscellaneous structures and special occupancies like Kumela there are lots of people crores of people are at the same place so in that case what kind of protections have to be taken heavy duty stacks even structures containing flammable vapors, flammable gases, or liquid that can give off flammable vapors. In fact, the, in the, which is highlighted in an indirect strike, in an indirect strike, 469 people died when lightning struck a set of oil tanks in 1994, causing burning oil to flood a town 
uh, you see it is uh, in Egypt, it is there. So there are special cases that this code has, or this guideline has given structures, housing, explosive material. There are explosive material may be there, like uh, Thirupur area and all those area we used to make during before Diwali. Uh, lots of uh, uh, fire or uh, explosives are uh, in under construction. Many times the fire takes off. Even you'll see that uh, wind turbines, watercraft, boats, and ships, uh, it is mandatory to have those things. Airfield lightning circuits are also there. Even solar arrays. In our solar array, it is a must to have an earthing. To, uh, it is only earthing is provided, but more or less uh, it is a must to provide uh, such kind of things. And another things which is highlighted were dry lightning. Like we say that uh, bolt from the blue. Eh? Dry lightning is a lightning that occurs with no precipitation at the surface and is the most common natural cause of wildfire like fire, that forest fire that takes place. Most of the time, how forest fire works, uh, or even some kind of dry lightning can light the things. So these are all some of the observations that uh, data that which are being made available that forest fire, we know in our childhood that, oh yes, uh, there are some friction between the dry leaves or trees or branches, and then it occurs. But there may be uh, indirectly that dry lightning may cause also forest fire in an area that uh, crossing several districts or even country. Uh, America is one of them or Australia or even in our country also there are lots of lightning phenomena is there. Okay, so this is all uh, taken covered in that NFPS 780 which uh, was adopted in 2019 in USA. But uh, I would say that how much current is produced, this is already you have, go you have got below 5000 ampere. In our house only it is 5 ampere to 15 ampere in all our SEs and everything, uh, which are generally compared to this, you know, is uh, 5 ampere and whereas it is 7000 ampere, you can see. So 10,000 ampere peak current represents 90. I wanted to highlight that, not to keep it in mind that how much, just only giving you uh, that one idea. 10,000 ampere peak current represents 91% of all lightning events. This is again a database collected from the sources. So a typical lightning flash is about 300 million. 300 million means uh, you can say 30 crore, uh, 30 crore volts and about 30,000 amperes in comparison to household currents of 120 bins in USA, in their case, our case is 220 uh, volts and 15 amperes. So uh, all these things, again, uh, there are lots of database, lots of such, uh, uh, you know, uh, IEC material is available. And which one that return strokes and other things in milliseconds, they talk about the time elapse is milliseconds to come down from the top to bottom and three kilometer, typically three kilometer in above. So lightning flash consisting of three strokes and lasting about just less than one tenth of a second. So uh, lightning occurs most, mostly during thunderstorm, you have got already, as well as other types of energetic weather system. But volcanic lightning, maybe it is unheard of because we don't have volcanic eruptions in our country. But volcanic lightning can also occur during volcanic eruptions. So there are many records are there, but in our country's context, not yet. The principal components of lightning protection system, these are there. I'm not going into much detail, but some example that I'm going to show, air termination, down conductors, joint and bonds, testing joints, earth terminations, uh, of course, air terminations, earth terminations, and earth electrodes. These are the components. Indirect losses, in addition to direct losses, such as destruction of buildings by lightning, fire resulting from lightning, 
and the killing of livestock and indirect losses sometimes accompany the destruction or damage of buildings and their contents. This is just a context setting. An earth system, inspection and maintenance of lightning protection system, which is to be done, which code has given that how frequently these are to be checked, how third party check has to be done. And then there are certain formats are given, which I'll show in the end, what are the kind of inspection and auditing that we have to do. It is not financial audit only. Now structure, infrastructure, lightning system, and any kind of industry, uh, they are being audited to see that which system is operation after how many cycles or how many days of operation that needs some kind of, you know, uh, some kind of uh, check and then uh, replacement and other things have to be done. Building resting on moist clay soil, plus simple ordinary soil, and on the other by a building resting on bare solid rock, which one is more effective? In fact, question comes if it is simply soil or if it is a rock, which one is more effective? As far as uh, what uh, experts say that each one is effective, only thing is that uh, only thing is that we have to keep it in mind that the material that we are using, copper or uh, aluminium or even steel, that we material that we are using based on the specifications. In fact, all these things are given in this uh, in this guideline or code uh, that uh, we have to see that the material that which are used, the conductors and all the things, uh, these have to be functional and sound enough, they should not get deteriorated or moisture should not cause them even uh, say rusting and other things or they are isolated or some kind of fungus grows there or it becomes more ineffective. As far as there is no such difference as far as the materials that which we are putting inside or in the building or wherever it is. So that, uh, that this doesn't make much difference. It may be in the moist soil or wherever it is, but the material that which is being used, that has to be sound enough. Now in tree, tree protections, how it is to be done. But these days, you know, uh, like a uh, week back, uh, the leaf faced, in fact, uh, so much of, uh, uh, say, wind, and there are several number of trees, so several trees has blocked the road and other things. Of course, it is not due to the thunderbolt or anything. It is because of the high wind and, you know, cyclonic effect on many of our coastal cities. But when we are looking at that, what kind of banding has to be done and how a tree, say many trees are there more than 100 years old and many trees are there, they are giving much more, you know, contribution in terms of carbon dioxide and other things also. Even many of the village area, you know that, uh, the market and other things, they are having a large stream, maybe 100 plus years, they are under their shade that all those weekly marketing or even uh, uh, daily marketing activities goes on. So their contribution is enormous. In that case, then uh, if one of that kind of tree that which has been serving that community or in that area, so we have to come forward to install these devices on the tree also in order to protect it. So even though we are we are looking at saving our live and livestock that don't go near the tree during this thunderstorm or other things, but at the same time, some of the tree or some of the establishments or some of these natural things, we have to protect them, not only the buildings, not only that wherever we are uh, in the monuments or wherever it is, we need to bring such kind of devices into that. And for that, in fact, what I would like to say that specifications are given. I'm not going into that detail, just only trying to show you the spectrum of a, a code, uh, code that which has taken up uh, such aspects also uh, uh, that to protect even a tree. And how to set them and what is their dimensions? So that is the main function of the code. It has to be specific enough so that engineers or experts that who are working while installing them, they must be familiar with the guideline that given there. What are the requirements? What is the distance? It is all being defined over here. All this, this is the A, uh, is like uh, 10 inch or 25, 250. 25 centimeter you can say so air terminal tip configuration can be sharp 
or it can be blunt like this is sharp this can be blunt so uh, these are all uh, taken from the code and then where they are to be placed like in this kind of building this is the plan this is the elevation so here it is to be provided if the if the shed like it is a slanted one where it is to be provided higher height it is to be provided highest point is to be provided here when it is a broken gable or something like that it is to be provided over here like this this is the shade and if it is a gabriel or something like that where they are to be provided and how many they are to be provided how many they are to be provided like is one two three like this one two three one two three something like that and for that all specifications are given and if it is such kind of buildings that where they are to be provided and if it is this kind of things how they look like on the top and look like in the and like these are the air terminal that which is being shown over here air terminal and then uh, the so protection measures are various roof types and these are all given in our indian standard also and what are their specification given uh, with the distance that what will be this distance with a and b air terminals are located within 600 mm of ends of the ridges it is not at the end here you see it is to be put at least 600 mm means 60 centimeter inside means two two feet inside here at this place this is also being specified and this has to be around six meter so every six meter that maximum spacing has to be six meter so the, those who install these things uh, they are to be familiar with going through whatever the code that has given these are based on the international understanding and the kind of installation that with the dotted line, if it is placed over here, then it is it will come here and where finally grounding has to be done. For this also specific designs are given. And if it is uh, something for intermediate reaches also in our code, which was made in 1989, BIS code 2309, it has given all this that what is this distance a has to be uh, 15 meter in such cases maximum spacing in such cases and b has to be around uh, six meter so six meter is this one and uh, a here because here it is there here it is there here it is there so six meter spacing is connected here but this can be even uh, say b can be even uh, a can be a here what it, it may be 50 feet or 15 meter away so such kind of specifications are given and how to decide in a building of this like in our uh, uh, city like in skyscrapers building that which are the places uh, that we have to provide this thing so there are certain kind of uh, illustration given tangent rolling of sphere method so there are various methods whichever is there wherever this sphere is touching that is that will be the level so there are many such uh, this is a very easiest easy way that it has to be done then uh, such kind of calculations are also done and then how it is to be placed air terminals in a chimney like uh, how it is to be placed or even uh, the roof that it is having this is showing that air terminal position and this is showing the air terminal position with all the specifications given in the code and then how it is to be decided that zone of protection zone of protection in the previously i have shown so with the shadow curve now zone of protection depicting rolling sphere method what kind of things you see uh, this kind of thing this is almost say 30 degree or this is about 45 meter radius if you make something like that wherever it is touching that if we provide something uh, like these are the terminal air terminal we are providing it is going to protect this portion also so there are beautiful uh, explanations are there the location of down conductors shall depend on the consideration such as the following placement of strike termination devices most direct coursing of conductors earth conditions and these are all location of large metallic bodies location of underground metallic piping system uh, it is all that uh, underground metallic piping system wherever it is depends on that this kind of position in fact this is already shown in a picture form that how these are being decided in a single mast how it is being decided and overhead ground wires if it is there where form is there what are the uh, that uh, 
protection that they can single mass zone protection overhead ground so these are all and then how it is to be taken to the ground typical single ground rod installation you see how it is to be banned of course i am not going to say but the, the workers or the technicians or whoever comes there in the house how it is to be banned there should not be a sharp band for that also they have given that what is the band what is the angle how it is to be done how much depth it is to be taken to the ground and all these things are there and in fact loop conductor when it is done in the form of a loop conductor here it is there this is there this is there this is there these are the air terminals and then how it is to be made in the form of a loop only that's enough ground ring electrode installations is also being done and this is also being done 45 degree if a protected building is there like uh, faraday casing that uh, colonel sivasta was mentioning over there so these are all taken up in the codal provision uh, that to uh, to decide about that if some protected devices uh, 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 buildings or uh, explosives are there how they are to be provided and how they are to be decided and where to install these uh, protection devices this is that is uh, 2309 1989 and then in a large chimney or heavy duty stack and other thing details are there i am not going into that much detail and then if it is a railway lines huh? railway this is the railway rails are there that where this and you know that we often see such kind of conducting where is there in the railway lines so you can see where it is to be placed and how it is to be made in elevation you can see main conductor you'll see railway lines you can see how they are connected interconnected and we can see and then at what distance that it is to be taken and what are the installations to be made like three feet three meter that it has shown and then if it is a you know boat mast and that uh, how it is to be decided a uh, protected zone inside in order to protect that how uh, this terminal has to be product product uh, provided and then in our you know very much familiar with our solar panels and other things it is a must to make that our thing so the typical protection arrangement with air terminals mounted from rack so please uh, now government is giving lot of subsidies in uh, solar panel across the country so while installing these things even at individual level or residential level please be sure about the lightning protector uh, that which is a must even though they put these things but how much perfect it is to, it is to be checked like single panel or solar array and other thing how it is to be done this is all taken and what are the distance that each is the height of air termination above the reference these are also taken from the code and these are all many other things are there zone of protection utilizing rolling sphere method it is all decided and because code gives that direct specific guidelines measurements quantification uh, placement and then uh, taking care of that inspection which I come later. You see now last uh, but one slide. Detailed risk assessment worksheet. So uh, after all those installation and being done, after all these installations are being done, uh, like all these specifications follow, then it comes that because lightning is a disaster, then uh, code has given some of these specifications that how to carry out detailed risk assessment worksheet, rapid visual screening and many things. So equivalent collective area, these are all calculation formulas there, annual threat of occurrence uh, and then probability of damage. So many such sections and subsections are given. So lightning safety plan, add a this is there around four or five pages are there so all this detail just i wanted to show only a few of the things that how these are tables are made available now let me uh, go to the end of this add a lighting safety plan to the employee site safety program give specific training and direction to outside workers how to respond to the threat of lightning including how to assess the threat when to stop work where to get shelter at when it is safe to resume work and then pre-plan safe location, pre-plan, because disaster management plan that which have been being uh, emphasized after disaster management act throughout the country, almost all the districts in the country, they have made the plan. So pre-plan, so this also should be included in that plan, if not yet included. So in that case, provision should be in place for outdoor workers have to access lightning safe spaces. 
design and implement lightning safe work environments, provide protected structures. You see, all these specifications are given in the code. It is only to adoption of the same following the code. This is what that I wanted to show you. Stage metallic vehicles with hard tops to in close proximity to the work site. Identify protected structure nearby. Identify substantial nearby structure. These are the things. Lightning conditions are to be monitored continuously. In most cases, a combination of lightning network subsection service, which is in fact available in some of the states have taken in the uh, in, in our country. Uh, a professional grade lightning warning system, like I have shown in the very first photo, the portable devices and giving warning or uh, with a smart way or as well as an SMS in a remote area. And a high quality handheld detector is suggested. This is what that. So the lightning risk assessment format is provided to assist building owner, safety professional, architect, engineer in determining risk of damage or injury due to lightning. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. For starting oh. from the beginning of lightning link protect protection system and concluding the lightning safety plan. So thank you very much, sir. In between, you covered the devices we can use for the early warning systems different standard you have shown installation guides with different codes and methods manuals and the uh, electronic uh, other things how we can use in the infrastructure system so this is uh, all from our today's webinar now i would like to request dr garima agrawal to conclude today's webinar over to you ma'am Thank you so much. First of all, thanks for an elaborated presentation and demonstration by the panelists, uh, Ganesh Vasa, Mr. Gotsev, and uh, Professor Ghosh on their topic. And a lot of knowledge has been exchanged today. It lasts two hours or maybe more. Now are going to be three hours. So long session, but I should say it's a very productive session. And we all have uh, learned not only the the general side of it but also the technical side of it so that is the part one important area which we have covered not just the general knowledge about the lightning how it has distributed around and what are the issues and what are the do's and don'ts how we should manage the lightning system but also we have discussed about how lightning is caused and how it can be mitigated and what are the arresters types of arresters how the arresters can be installed and how and where all places we should install the arresters. So these are the new things which we normally do not go into. And we just talk about the management part of it and some do's and don'ts and on. But we have gone beyond uh, that level and we have touched upon the scientific side of it. So that is very, uh, I feel that is a successful thing which we have done in this today's three hours webinar. So uh, my job is to summarize the proceeding of today's webinar. So am I on my job? Uh, uh, yeah, so climate change condition are causing extreme rise in temperature, which causes extreme rains, lightning events, and thunderstorm. Lightning is an unavoidable disaster uh, through preventable, uh, sorry, it is an unavoidable disaster through preventive actions. And uh, as uh, Colonel uh, Shivastav also said, that 95% that take place in rural areas because it happens in open places, in the farms, in the in the labor where the laborers are working, and all. So the period, so it is very important how to prevent in uh, lightning event in such areas. The period which is important in terms of lightning is June to September. That is during monsoon. Early warning can save life. And for that, we should download the Gamini app and we should follow the do's and don'ts of lightning. The few of them I would like to say, like install lightning arresters at your house or a building. We should not stand below a tree during the rains. That has been repeatedly told by uh, the virtue assessor that we should not touch because the touch voltage can release and cause deaths and injuries. So we need to stay inside the permanent building instead of the temporary structures and open spaces. And we should avoid using electricity and as also been identified that don't take selfies and uh, through mobiles and don't use mobiles and all. So vertical strikes are more vulnerable. And uh, one important aspect which has been explored in today's webinar is that uh, human deaths, of course, it is increasing, but 
deaths of any one stock is eight times more than human deaths. So attention should be given on the livestock prevention as well. So important, build, uh, important building must have lightning protection system. And uh, these could be like lighting conductors or such protection devices should be installed. And states should invest in lightning management, actually. The technical assessment of early warning is also required. District wide, because there is a difference of atmospheric electricity and soil resistance. So the, it is important to do a local level or district level lightning risk assessment as a tailor made approach is required to be built. And any, uh, I don't know if Kadan uh, Srivastav uh, is already there. I wanted to know that which are the states actually, uh, you have taken one or two examples, but is there any district also who has done this lightning risk assessment? Uh, so that is one question which is in my mind, uh, if it can be reflected. Yeah, there are districts who have done their lightning protection. Okay. And especially in Jharkhand, all 24 districts have done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Odisha, a few districts have done it. Then in uh, um, Maharashtra, you have Nanded, Latur, uh, they have done it. So there are micro level analysis which a lot of districts have done it there are few districts in kerala andhra who have done it but the my concern areas are mostly in madhya pradesh uttar pradesh and bihar since they constitute almost 70 percent plus of the casualties we need to focus on a scientific approach in these states and the states who have taken scientific approach they have reduced the mortality and the fatality so important is we should touch those states where it is, you know, frequency you know, is high, still yeah. fatal. Okay. Despite all these solutions, uh, you know, treatment is there, but the patient should be willing to take the treatment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have got, we have done it for entire country. Any state which wants, they can take it from us. We can give it for any district of India. Wonderful. So after uh, that, we had a demonstration uh, on the fire, oh, sorry, the lightning arresters and all by Constance, sir. And then Professor Ghoshe shared about regarding new technology and how it can be used to strengthen the resilience. He presented a device called lightning alert, which can detect the numbers of strikes, uh, precisely the location and also the accuracy of time to strike. And it could be beyond, I mean, more than 10, 12 minutes, which the device was also showing. And so I told that it could be like 30 minutes before even it can predict the time of, uh, you know, lightning. So which gives you sufficient time to manage and mitigate that event. And you can evacuate or whatever you can take the, uh, I mean, that thing is something, uh, this technology is something which can be used to mitigate or to protect the lightning event, you know, completely. So that's an amazing device which gives warning well in advance. And he also shared the standards which can be used for installation of lightning systems and kind of structures where lightning protection is required. We can put lightning protection devices on trees as well and as it will protect the environment. And one another thing which he mentioned is very important that solar panels, whenever we have solar panels on the rooftop, we should install lightning protectors. So that is important. And we need to conduct risk analysis and we should pre-plan the safe locations for, for the, our area. So these are the major important points which we have discussed in today's webinars. If anybody want, from the panel wants to add something in it, then please go ahead. If it is fine, yeah. then yes, sir. Do you want to add something? Yeah, anything from? Yeah, anything else if you, anybody wants to say? Okay, oh, I, I think, I think uh, everything has been covered up very nicely and uh, got a lot of uh, improvement scope, uh, I can say, right, right now and uh, implementation to the uh, last mile, actually to the farmers and to, to the people who are really requiring it as uh, uh, Professor Ghosh mentioned, like maybe a small SMS, maybe a small device, handle device. Yes. So we are also doing a prototype of that uh, device, which uh, uh, Professor Ghosh uh, showed us in the presentation. Uh, maybe in some uh, future meeting and future web webinar, we would like to present uh, and show the functionality and uh, we can take it from there also. So okay, back to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, any other addition or should I conclude the uh, present the vote of thanks and I have only one bottom line to say. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. Any presentation or anything with it comes. अपने किसान को ढूंढता हूं मैं अपने तरवाहे को ढूंढता हूं मैं अपने मछुआरे को ढूंढता हूं और मैं उस आदिवासी को ढूंढता हूं जो जंगल में घूमता है हम उन तक कैसे पहुंचे दिस इज माय टारगेट सो ऑल टेक्नोलॉजी एवरीथिंग इज फाइन आई हैव आल्सो आई मीन आई डोंट वांट टू से ऑल दिस बट हम लोगों ने ये बड़ी पढ़ाई करी बहुत सारे थ्योरी पढ़े मैं वो सोचता हूं वो कैसे इसको करें ग्राउंड पे कैसे जाना दैट इज द मेजर दैट इज माय क्रक्स साइंस टॉपर ऑफ माय बैच गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट बट ठीक है वो सब चलता है उस उन कैसे पहुंचाना है वो जरूरी है या उसी लिए उसी लिए हमने ग्राउंड में सिलीगुड़ी साइड में 50 60 किलोमीटर दूर पे भी हमने पुट अप करके उस उस विलेज को अलर्ट करने का कोशिश कर रहा है विद हेल्प ऑफ स्मॉल साइरेंट टाइप ऑफ डिवाइस यू नो लोगों को पता चल रहा है वहां पे कि कुछ होने जा रहा है सो अगेन अ कम्युनिटी फेथ has to also come up the education to the community also has to come up mai ek microphone laga ke zor se ek siren baja diya so uska matlab kya hai they should come back to the house and they should yeah decoding is also important message ka yes 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 i 100% agree with sanjay ji also for this reason wo kisan and wo bhai jo bahar hai usi mein hamara concern hai thank you ma'am Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, now, yeah. Uh, towards the end, I would like to thank all the panelists for taking out their time for making this event successful. Shreya and Shad for coordinating the event, and ITM team, uh, IT and training center to support us in hosting the event. Last but not the least, the participants who have stayed tuned with us and throughout the session have been quite active. I request the participants to fill up the feedback form for generating the certificates. and please note that certificates takes a, uh, about a 10 days of time so you need to collect it for at the nidm site and only the registered participants will be receiving the certificates uh, with this yes shreyas i think i missed something you can add in it <laughs> yeah, nothing so ma'am present certificate of appreciation to our yes. panelist of today's webinar ki yeah, akanya yes, sanjay kumar shivastava yeah. yeah yeah and and also Costa, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I have uh, created one more for our uh, uh, Mr. Saikip Das. Okay. I don't have his picture, but I will take him and uh, paste it there. Okay. So he was working with us. So I have created yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much, you. and we will share these certificates via email. Thank you so much. Okay. So yeah. I think. I think uh, it is. Uh, wonderful and uh, let us see that uh, more and more such practical demonstration and and also that it is not only that uh, electronics is also involved installations are also involved engineering is also involved codal provisions are also involved and then uh, early warning is also there so it is a uh, in total i would say that just package of we are taking lightning uh early warning and mitigation measures but it is true for all other kinds of hazards that we have been facing whether it is earthquake landslide whether it is forest fire in every cases that disaster management cycle the pre and post or during and these things i think uh, we'll take up several such kind of uh, seminar online along with along with hybrid uh, demonstration like which uh, uh kostav ji has uh, taken this uh, and uh, he has uh, opened up a, a new dimension to the seminar that uh, last time also in ham radio uh, along with arya sir and today also in this so the very very short notice only not even 48 hours uh, but we'll see that uh, more such uh, programs will come up with more specific uh you know demonstration of the items that which can ignite our uh, our researchers or even school children and everyone they can come forward and in that regard in fact uh, i would like to mention here of course i am taking more time but there are there are lot many interns in our uh, institute that they are joining now so uh, so some of the interns they are from uh, say they are with computer science background 
they are doing things like uh, like uh, making a game with learning through entertainment using the disaster management uh, like we have several iec material so when i have given them one of the iec material developed by us more than 10 years back looking for a software to make it in a gamification of that, uh, like earthquake safety, road safety. So gamification of that uh, is being done in less than uh, three or four days of time, which I have been looking for more than 10 years. Right. So so that way they, say they, they know all the advanced knowledge of uh, ad advanced information, especially making whatever they are able to see, making into mobile app, making into uh, into a game and then uh, create a parallel kind of you know <clears throat> platform in disaster management education learning through entertainment so which uh, is a very recent development in nidm we are we will be very happy uh, to attract interns in nidm some are paid but some are unpaid also so many of them are joining now without any payment in, in fact so that way, I think we can we can synergize our effort in, in disseminating the disaster mitigation management related, not only the information, but all the skill, as well as that, like most of the devices that I have shown, these are not made in India. So our spirit is to have these things made, assembled, made in India, going to Chandni Chowk and get all those devices together, engage few students, there, make them, assemble them. In fact, we have visited also some of the IoT company uh, premises so that what not that they are able to do and connect. So we'll see that future, uh, in future, we'll have more such practical, such uh, say, demonstration of such items to our participants. Right. So shall we close the program now? Thank you very much. Okay, thank Keshe you very much. Yeah, program you. from the training center. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.